Again, Paralympic trials here in Quebec at Newton Park Swimming Pool in the heart of Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality. Thank you for joining us once again as we continue to see athletes strive for their places in Tokyo. So far, we've had a couple book their spots, the likes of Chad Leclerc, Ethan Dupria, and Tatiana Schoonmacher. Who will be added to that illustrious list tonight? That's, of course, the Olympic side. As for the Paralympics, plenty doing the same. The likes of Christian Saadi looking sensational, uh, as has Kat Swanepoel. So there has really been some amazing performances in the pool here in Quebec. And we expect to see a whole lot more. If you joined us this morning, there were plenty of heats uh, taking place. But now it's the real deal. The finals about to take to the water. I'm hoping uh, to be joined by Chad Leclerc in a couple of minutes' time. As he's just uh, conducting an interview as we speak. But uh, having a look uh, at the woman uh, lining up here is the order of what you will see this evening. Kicking off with the women's IM, followed by the men. Move over to the Paralympic qualifiers, S14 and 1500 breast. A uh, couple of events in the 100 breast. We move over to the women's and men's 100 backstroke, 50 meter fly, 400 freestyle, both men and women. And then we've uh, got women and men free relay, 4 by 100. What's not in the schedule, and it is a late addition to proceedings, and it's uh, quite an exciting one. It's going to come just before the relays, towards the end uh, of the evening. And that is Tatiana Schoonmacher, who will be completing a time trial. So what that means is she'll take to the water. Uh, Tatiana Schoonmacher have already having booked her place uh, to the Olympics, but it is for the 200 breaststroke. And what's that doing? It's in order to replicate the experience she will experience over in Tokyo because ordinarily competitors take part in heats, followed by semi-finals and finals, so effectively uh, three evenings of racing. So that hasn't been the case here because you go straight from the heats uh, through to the finals. So they're wanting to replicate that experience as much as possible. So we will seeing her a little later in action by herself as she basically races against the clock to see how she can do with three competitive nights in a row. So lots to look forward to here in Quebec, day four of the SA Swimming Champs, the Olympic and Paralympic trials. It's been amazing to watch. And uh, yeah, we really thank everyone for joining us um, as we continue to bring the action poolside. So we have some highlights uh, from what took place uh, earlier in the week. There we see Chad Leclerc going up against Ethan Dupre. This was the men's 200 butterfly. Man, this was a tremendous race. And uh, Chad uh, qualifying, as did Ethan Dupre, funny enough, in that same race. There's been some extraordinary swims. Uh, the Null Twins, they've been performing too. We had Olivia Null joining me earlier this morning during the heats. Another man who joined us, Aaron Sweeney. Cape Tonian who moved to KZN to continue his swimming. Great breaststroker. It is a, a tremendous vibe here at the pool. As continually mentioned, unfortunately, no spectators have been robbed of the chance of being able to watch due to COVID protocols. But the good news is that if you're following this right now, well, you've been watching it on being broadcast, which is fantastic. And we are really, really glad to be able to bring this to you. So the PA confirming that we are about to begin here in Quebec. Kicking off with the women's 400 IM. Only one final taking to the water. We have Trinity Hearn, Samantha Randall, Malise Ross, Dakota Tucker, Emma Kuhn, and Jessica Whelan. Dakota Tucker had a, a very good performance this morning during the heats. She'll be looking to repeat the feat this time around.
So it is the IM 400. Eight laps of the pool, all four strokes. Starting with Butterfly. And away they go. Good start over in lane four from Molise Ross. Dakota Tucker looking strong too. Early days. The first of eight laps underway. Nice effort from Samantha Randall as well. Molise Ross looking very strong. But Dakota Tucker looks to have edged ahead of her competitors. Only just. Dakota Tucker will touch first. Just ahead of Molise Ross, also looking good. Jessica Whelan, out in lane seven. Dakota Tucker continues to power on. Watch her go. Dakota Tucker's uh, seeding time, 4.56.21. Tokyo qualifying time, 4.38.53. The record in this event. From a South African perspective, held by Catherine Meeklem. Set in 2008, also set in 2008, was the African record by Zimbabwe's Kirsty Coventry. 4.29.89. Oh, Dakota Tucker still out in front as they begin the second leg. It is backstroke. And away they go. Dakota Saka. Taka still holding on to top spot as she gets towards the turn. Closely followed by Malise Ross. And Trinity Hearn in third position. A strong effort here from Dakota Tucker. Just ahead of Molly's Ross. The fight continues between the two. And gaining in over for second place over in lane two, or lane three rather, it is Samantha Randall making her comeback felt as the competitors move over to breaststroke now. But it's and it and it is all Dakota Tucker at the moment. A tremendous effort. Good at you. So Dakota Tucker looking great as uh, she makes a turn, and I'm um, joined by a very special guest. Uh, he's been burning up the pool. Not tonight, though. Chad Leclerc, welcome aboard. <laughs> hey guys, <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually the first time in uh, probably over a decade I've had a day off and then swam the next day. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have you on board. A very good swim so far from Dakota Tack in the women's 400 IM uh, as she powers on opening up a healthy lead over Marlies Ross. And uh, just in third position is Samantha Randall. A, a, a very tough event. I this, is, this is a tough one. I, I, all the guys listening at home, I think this is, uh, this is the toughest event on the program. Uh, this is the one that started me off, you know, 2009, uh, where I qualified for my first one. Uh, Dakota looking really strong. Yeah, I actually spoke with uh, Pete earlier, and he, he, was, uh, he was very confident about this. And obviously, Molly's uh, very experienced, uh, you know, rooting for her too. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Okay, they move over to the final discipline of the IM. It is the freestyle. They'll fly through this very quickly as uh, Dakota Tucker continues to lead the way ahead of Molise Ross, uh, followed by Samantha Randall just behind her. Uh, but uh, Dakota Tucker looks to have had the sewn up. Once again, a reminder of her prelim time, 4.56.21. As she makes the turn for the final time, does Dakota. And then she makes the turn at 4.16. 61 4 56 21 was her seeding time and away she goes this is a tremendous performance chat this is a huge one uh, i think she's only 16 years old if i'm not mistaken uh, yeah this is a tough race 
And I think just to uh, just to see on an experienced field, you know, to see what she's doing here, she's going to smash her time from the morning. Okay, yeah, she certainly is on her way to doing that. Uh, currently sitting at 4.40. 4.56 was the earlier one, and uh, yeah, that stands no hope of standing. <laughs> yeah, she comes home to a terrific time. Jeez, I think wow. just over the 4.50 mark, 4.50.48, Dakota Tucker. Congratulations wow. on the victory in uh, second position claimed by Samantha Randall. Nice comeback from her. And wow. Trinity Hearn comes in for third. Wow, what a performance. Yeah, congratulations to Dakota Tucker. So, Chad, uh, did you enjoy your day off? It was uh, it was fun. Uh, like I said, it's the first time in a while, but uh, that was good. Played a bit of PlayStation, hang out, saw did, the boys. Did you? What were you playing? You know what, I was mixing it up. I was playing a bit of Red Dead Redemption, too. Oh, I love that you? game, yeah. Okay. Do you have FIFA yet? I do. I'll anyone, play you. I'll play you later. If anyone wants to play me, they can. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm very, very keen. Um, so talk us through your performances so far. Of course, booking your place for Tokyo with the 200 butterfly. Um, yeah, a tough race last night. Very, very closely fought between you and Matt uh, with the 200 free. Yeah, it was a uh, look. Uh, you know, firstly the you know the 200 fly was uh, amazing. I was very happy with uh, securing the time, and uh, <laughs> it was uh, you know I was very nervous for that race. I'll be honest with you. That was probably one of the most stressful races I've ever had just because Ethan beat me a couple of weeks ago mm. at the Grand Prix and I hadn't actually qualified technically even though I was qualified so I was definitely feeling the pressure a bit but uh, you know I had to change it up midway in the, in the race and I'm just delighted for Ethan to get the time too because I think uh, you know it's phenomenal Tra been training with him and uh, yeah over the moon for him and, and, and obviously last night's performance from Matt Sates was, uh, was incredible you know he's uh, he also changed it up nicely there he went out oh, it took me by surprise but uh, fair play to him and Wayne uh, also been training with him the last couple of months so delighted for him you know, upset for myself. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't want to pretend like I'm not upset about it, but, uh, you know, uh, couldn't have gone to a more deserving young man. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny because you speak about the race with you and Ethan uh, when you won in the 200 flight. And I was sitting here and we had wrapped up and you and Ethan were uh, competing your warm downs. And uh, you're speaking to one of the coaching staff, explaining how nervous you were. Absolutely. Um, and, and I was amazed. I mean, uh, given what you've experienced in your time, um, we all know about London 2012, and you said this is one of the most nervous you've ever felt before a race, uh, despite the fact that you've Absolutely. been in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Hundreds of races. You know what? It, it's so weird. Eh? I get nervous for nationals more than anything else because I think because I come here as such a heavy favorite every time, and everyone expects me to win anything, even if I'm something like. 50 backstroke, you know what I mean? If I was racing, if I was racing Peter Lander back, everyone would be like, oh, Chad didn't win, you know? Mm. When I have actually no chance of winning, you know? But uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, also just coming in here, yeah, like, you know, I'm obviously prepared um, as best as I could, but, uh, you know, like uh, focusing on the Olympics, you know? So obviously, you know, no excuses or anything, but like, you know, having shaven down or anything like that. Mm. So, you know, the, the big focus will be, uh, will be uh, in a couple of months time. So uh, sometimes coming in here, yeah, you know, the youngster's always on my tail, and uh, yeah, but just great to see him swimming so fast. I mean, I mean, Matt's on a tear. I, I, I think he, uh, you know, seeing him now on TV now, I think he's a, he's a very special kid. I think he's got, he's got the, you know, he can go very far. I, I, I pick him to go very far in the sport, and uh, you know, same with Ethan. You know, they both train extremely hard. Uh, both got great coaches. Uh, yeah, both been living with me for the last three months, to be fair. So <laughs> we've been hanging out quite a bit. Uh, I heard Matt uh, speaking the other day and uh, how impressed he is with your dad's cooking skills. Yeah, my dad. My dad's listening now. Hey, dad. Uh, <laughs> he's probably calling me right now. <laughs> um, you know what? It's, uh, it's amazing because, yeah, he's, he's been cooking for us lunches and dinners yeah. all the time. It's just... Uh, He's so good. He's so good. <laughs> and, uh, and tell us, uh, of course, you, yourself and Ethan booking your place to Tokyo. But uh, on top of that, uh, Tatiana Skunmark, who we'll see a little later. She's competing in an individual time trial. Um, but also, I mean, she's uh, been sensational. Oh, she was phenomenal. Last night was a breathtaking swim. I, she got out of the warm down to go watch that. <laughs> I mean, she's, I picked her a couple of months ago. I said, look, she's going she's gonna to win the Olympics regardless of if Ifamova's there because everyone's talking about her not being there. I think she's good enough to win against anybody in the world. I think she can break the world record. That's how good I think she is. I think she's matured a hell of a lot in the last three, four years. And uh, yeah, incredible swim. And uh, what struck me as well was how emotional she was in that race or after the race as well, after breaking her own world or her own record. And she'd done it a little earlier in the day too, uh, earlier in the event with uh, the 100 breaststroke. But let's move over now to the men's 400 IM.
And we kick things off with Butterfly Chad looking very closely. Of course, Matthew Sates, he says uh, he is going to go find Matthew Sates uh, getting off to a flyer. Absolutely. Look, I'm, I'm predicting he's going to get this time. I've said this is the time that he should get. Uh, I have confidence he can get the 100 fly as well as well as the tournament melee, but this is the one, you know, this is the one that I got, you know, and I think this is, uh, you know, w with respect, an easier time than, than the others. So uh, looking really good. Jeez, and looking at him break away. So just Ooh. a reminder of that time, 4.15.84 is the Tokyo qualifying time, and uh, Matt said's prelim time 25. is 4.17.91. 25.41, what do you make of that? Man, he's going out super hard. I mean, my best ever is 54.8, and that's that's world record pace. So I think he's going to be right on that now, actually. Jeez, this is okay. a great swim. So you heard it here first, Chad Leclerc saying Matt Sates on world record pace. Look at him go, uh, breaking away. I mean, it's uh, him and then daylight. Uh, for this, the first leg. And Chad Leclerc busy taking photos right now as we speak <laughs> of uh, this experience. This has been sensational. Matt States making the oh, turn. 54.91, Chad. 54.91. He's, he's 0.1 off the world record split. I mean, he's uh, he's flying. He's going to go 4.12 the way he's looking, actually. Yeah. Again, that reminder, 4.15.84 is the Olympic qualifying time. And Matt Sates has broken away as he moves over to the backstroke. Uh, it's something about him. And uh, and again, it's weird to say because uh, yourself, I mean, you and your, your 20s, I know you you've got a birthday in a couple of days' time. 17 years of age, a youngster doing this. Incredible. Well, 2009 was my first trip. Uh, I was 17 and uh, I was uh, I was 4.17.05. I qualified by the two one hundredths of a second and I had the full suit. So, uh, I mean, Matt's looking like he's going to turn here by two minutes to a one. Uh, and if he's on that pace and he hits a 112, I mean, if he doesn't come home faster than a minute, then my name's not Chad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chad Leclerc uh, predicting big things for Matt Sates. 129.87 at the turn as he makes his way to the halfway mark of this 400 IM. Jeez, uh, it, it really is a battle for second place because Matt Sates looks to have had the sewn up so early days as he makes the turn. Let's see, Chad, tell us what the time is when he comes through. All right, so it looks like it's a 203. I mean, we've got the shrink shrink coming in on 206, uh, Ed and Sweeney. Also been swimming with me for a while. So this is going to be a, a quite a nice contest coming up here. Matt's going to need about a 110 on this breaststroke now. And uh, yeah, Sweeney looking very strong here, actually. Yeah, very, very good effort from Sweeney. Ed and Sweeney swimming out of lane six, but uh, there goes Matt Sates. It's funny about the shrink shrink because Ed and Sweeney sat down today, he joined me. Those are the first words out of his mouth. <laughs> I spoke to him earlier. Yeah, we've been uh, shame. You know, he was in the hospital a couple of uh, weeks ago. Uh, you know, some 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 bad kidney. Uh, you know, almost failure. So uh, I think just that he's here is a great uh, great achievement. You know, he's actually had a great uh, training block. Um, turning on a 43 and a 40. Yeah, Matt's gonna have to do a, a 33. Yeah. And then under a minute, yeah, it's going to be tight, actually. Okay, so Matt Sates sitting at 240.33 in this uh, as he completes the breaststroke leg. It is the penultimate Come leg on, of the IM. You can see Chad Leclerc cheering him on, maybe a competitor, but uh, theoretically also teammates. Uh, they were dinner guests for the last couple of months, roommates for the last couple of months, and uh, Bert Leclerc was the chef. So here he comes through, Matt Sates. Touching down for the free 317.42, Chad. 417. Yeah, he's gonna. Yeah, he's needs a 58.8. Yeah, I think. I think he can bring it home. I'm just gonna see how he's looking now. Um, he's looking good. It's gonna be tight. Okay, so the time once again 415.84 is what he needs in order to get through and book his trip to the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Uh, Chad's already there. Ethan's already there. Tatiana's already there. Will they be joined? by others and you can see the photographers lining up uh, getting ready to see and capture the moment if he can do it makes the turn 349.16 chad he's he's a little bit off where i thought he would be but i think if he can bring it home yeah 27 i mean he's got a he's got a strong chance but uh look he, he took it out really hard eh? 54 that's really hard he went for it okay 415.84 is that time that we need it's going to be extremely tight it's going to be tight Oh, and it looks like he is going to miss out on it, unfortunately. 4.15.84 was the Tokyo qualifying time, and he does it in 4.19.38, Chad. Look, it's a respectable swim. Uh, look, that wasn't easy. He went out 54, maybe a little bit hard, but, uh, hey, he's still, uh, he's still got a shot in the 100 tomorrow, and, of course, a turn I am. So, uh, you know, uh, fair play to Matty. I think uh, maybe a little strong the first 100, but other than that, Hey, you can't fault him for going for it, eh? And, uh, yeah, you can see how disappointed you are. It's actually quite hectic to see that uh, yeah, you Yeah, yeah, I'm a little sad, actually, because, uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I was really, I really thought he could get it there. But, uh, hey, it's, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get in there, you know. Sometimes, you know, even, 
in the vest of us can have a bit of an off day, you know, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, but he came out those blocks firing. I mean, you were really, really impressed with how he started. I was very impressed. That, that first 100, look, the, the back shot wasn't, wasn't his best. Uh, you know, he came in a 2 or 3 low, so, uh, yeah, a little bit slow in the back. Um, anyway. <laughs> this fly's looking good. <laughs> this fly's looking good for tomorrow, so I'm not too worried. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go and enjoy the racing, but before you go, I've got to ask uh, how you enjoyed uh, your time in Tebeka. No, it's amazing. You know, uh, look, obviously it was, uh, it was a strange one because usually nationals isn't Durban, but uh, for me, I think uh, it's been quite nice to, you know, kind of get away for a week, you know. I've mm. just been kind of by myself, uh, you know, doing my thing and, uh, you know, just getting focused again, and it was really cool. You know, I think each, each day I've enjoyed it. You know, I've enjoyed the racing. Even last night, I enjoyed it. Um, no, no, you're good, you're good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's oh, sorry. No worries at all. Sorry, we just had the director letting us know that uh, we are moving over to the interview quickly. We're going to hear uh, from the very first winner of the first final. That was Dakota Tucker doing extraordinary things over in the women's 400 IM. Dakota Tucker swimming a 450 in the 400 IM. Um, I think you've waited quite a while to have your big race for the gala. How did you feel about that race? I thought it was great. Um, it was a good first race. I was very happy with my time. It's not exactly where I wanted to go, but it was a PB. And yeah, I was very happy with the time there. And what other races do you have coming up? Are you also doing the 200 IM? And what else are you planning on swimming at the gala? I'm only swimming the 4 a.m. and 2 a.m. at the Scala, so I've got a day break tomorrow and then 2 a.m. on Monday. Well, well done and good luck for your last few races. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you very much to David Glover uh, completing the interview with Dakota Tucker. A really, really good effort there. That's for my documentary. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just had a selfie with Chad. Uh, really, really good to have him on board. And uh, yeah, you're saying you're really enjoying yourself uh, here in Quebec. And uh, the bio bubble's been a, a pity because, of course, you can't get to experience anything uh, beyond the pool and the hotel. But really well organized logistically, literally all staying under the same roof, into the bus, and off they go. Now, to be fair, it's been actually great. Uh, yeah, we we're a little nervous to see what it was going to be like, you know, because obviously uh, COVID has been tough on a lot of people, you know. Different, as you can see, some guys have come here in great shape and some. Some guys, you know, have, have, have struggled a little bit, obviously, because of the, you know, some people haven't had this access to training as, as some have. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just great to have a competition, to be very honest, you know. Mm. I think to see, to just, you know, it's been a year, man, since we've raced, mm. over a year. I mean, the last one was a Grand Prix in February we raced, you know, so technically, I mean, a year ago, 2020. So mm. we haven't had any national champs, and uh, it's just great to let some of, also the youngsters, to see the improvement, to see the lights of Matthew Sates, you know, uh, Ethan Dupree, all these guys, Peter Kutsia, you know, I never, uh, you know, I must be honest, I never knew who he was until that 50 fly. I mean, I was like, who's this boy going 24 to? <laughs> amazing stuff. Really, really amazing. So, uh, yeah, I'm just hoping you can get this 100 back tonight. Uh, another incredible talent, 16 years old. Uh, when I first saw him, I called him Uam. I thought he was like, you know, 28 years old. He was a big, big guy, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited for him. Oh, well, Chad, it's uh, been an honor and a privilege having you on board. Uh, congratulations with uh, what you've achieved so far here in Quebec. Thank you have uh, Etten joining us. Shrink, 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 shrinks over here. Hey, nice one there, brother. You look the good, bro. You're coming back there. No, you look good. You look good. 59 2. Chad, enjoying the conversation with Atten. Uh, unfortunately, we can't hear Atten, but uh, brilliant, Chad. Thanks so much. Yeah? Thanks, brother. Thank you very much. Cheers, cool. guys. We'll chat Thanks, later. Thanks. Cheers. Well then, Atten. Uh, yeah, yeah, quickly pop in. So, how's it? How was it? <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks, Chad Leclerc. Atten, we're going to hear from you for two seconds. How was that? It was absolutely tough. I won't lie to you, hey? But you know what? We finished off with a smile. It hurt the most I've ever hurt. But you know, we keep the shrink shrink going. We've got Alani here. It's my second time redeem myself. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, Alani Ferreira Alani about do, to, yeah. to take to the water before we joined by Theo to talk us through it. Uh, but quickly, what did, what did you make of uh, the performance uh, a little earlier? Of course, Matt Sates just missing out in Tokyo. Great swim by him. Wish I was a little closer. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Ethan Sweeney. Great to have you on board. Thanks very much to Chad Leclerc as we get the next event underway. It's the women's 100 meter brace stroke, S14, S15, S1, S13. And Theo Fistad joining us. Theo, a great race. Absolutely. I think uh, this morning those two girls already went at it uh, Cornell and uh, Alani. Um, Alani got a, a qualifying time for Paris, and Cornell got a SA record. 
So I think we're looking forward to seeing them race. And then we've got the other two girls on the other side also pumping nice and hard. So we'll, we'll see how they turn and come back for the second 50. Yeah, on the other sides, we've got uh, Kate Elwood, uh, Mish Kretzen, Paula Fincel, Cornell Leach, and Alani Ferreira, as we've heard a lot about her. And at first to the turn is Alani Ferreira in lane seven, uh, closely followed by Cornell Leach. She's a, a ser serious talent, these two. Absolutely. Um, with Alani already being at uh, Paralympics in 2016, she's got a, a wealth of experience. And uh, obviously, Cornell is still very young. She's only been to world champs before. Um, but you, you can see that she's, uh, she's still keeping up. And here, here goes Alani Ferreira breaking away uh, from Cornell Leach. Only just, though, uh, the 20 year old fighting away to the finish. Uh, her seeding time, 124.28. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I reckon that stands a chance of being obliterated. Let's just see now. 118, 119. What will she do? And she will, and she will come home. Yeah, she will make it. 123.97. Nice. A very, very nice effort. Closely followed by Cornell Leach and uh, they're over in lane two coming home we've got Kate Olwood uh, that's in the women's S14 S15 closely followed by Kretzen and they in lane five Paula Fincel some very good times absolutely um, if you look at uh, Lani she got another qualifying time and um, I think she got quite close uh, to her SA record so we'll get some confirmation Cornell got another uh, got a qualifying time and a South African record, so that's an NQF time, a NQS time for her. I yes. think she's going to be over the moon. That's the first time under 130, so I think she's going to be super stoked with that swim. Wow, that is incredible, Cornell Leach. Uh, kudos to you, hats off. Uh, what a phenomenal effort, and uh, and another one as well from Alani Ferreira. Some really really good swims as the swimmers complete uh, their warm down. So that's another event done and dusted a, a terrific one too you know i got a message uh, a little earlier uh, from someone he, he messaged me on twitter and he said uh, yeah you need to find out a bit more about lani ferreira um she, she may be interested in her life story and the struggles that she faced um i may be biased but she is inspiration to all absolutely um you know what every single guy, uh, person that's swimming here has got a, a phenomenal story and um, I think the public needs to get out there. We, we need to get out there more and uh, let them tell their stories uh, because it is truly inspirational. And, um, you know, everybody's got their own struggles. But when you go and see how these guys train and what they do, um, we, we can just be so grateful. You know, a good friend of mine, he's a longtime broadcaster, David O'Sullivan. Uh, he's been going to countless of Olympic Games. I think it, it goes back to, I think, Barcelona, in fact. And so he's done them all. And he says, Olympics is really cool, but his favorite is Paralympics. The characters that he meets, the people, it is just an amazing event. Absolutely. I totally agree with him. Um, I've, I've been fortunate to have been to, uh, I've got to count now, uh, <laughs> since 2008. Uh, so th this is my fourth uh, Paralympics. And uh, I w I've been to Olympics in 2000. And I would have given up my Olympics for going to one of their Paralympics any day wow. because it's so special. What was your favorite one to attend? I would say 2008 was very special for me. Um, I was fortunate to have been a coach for um, uh, Shireen Sapira that won gold for South Africa yes. at that meet. Um, but just also to be around uh, Natalie De Toy, one of our all-time greatest uh, pr products out of South Africa. Um, and then you've got the likes of Charles Bauer and um, Kevin Paul that obviously went on to 2016 mm. taking a gold in that uh, in that event. Kevin's in from here, if I'm not mistaken. He's from here. He's a local-born boy and. Um, He's uh, currently living in, uh, and uh, working in Dubai, um, but what a phenomenal athlete. Um, so we've been very fortunate to have been to all three uh, Commonwealth uh, uh, Paralympics with, uh, with all those swimmers. And uh, just to get to know them as a unit is phenomenal, but it's other characters from the other countries that brings the spice to, mm. to, to the game. And, um, you know, get to knowing them. Um, everybody loves the South Africans. Um, everybody just comes around to us uh, we love the Brazilians we love the English um, but they always uh, we, we've just got phenomenal friends uh, yeah we have uh, the guys in picture now about to compete in the 100 breaststroke and uh, one of them being uh, Aaron Putz uh, we've also uh, it's what's amazing to me is that was it Aaron that came up to me and he gave me a massive hug just now and him. yeah and he said uh, yeah, I think you need to cool down a bit. And obviously, it just got out the pool. You're soaking wet. And that's why you see you actually might be sitting in some of the water too. But he went and grabbed me. The lovely guy. 
Absolutely. Uh, he's very, uh, he loves uh, giving wet hugs. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's definitely one of our awesome characters of our squad. Um, he's on our uh, South African squad. And, um, you know, he tries his best. He trains really hard. And such an inspiration to watch him train and, and race. Okay, so competing this time around, we've got Kamarane, Puts, the Freitas, and the two Fandamavas. That's correct. Um, Hendrik uh, obliterated the that was amazing uh, today. time this morning. Um, he swam right on his PB. Um, currently, um, with quite a few countries that still need to swim, we've got um, we've got him ranked uh, number one in the world currently wow. uh, with this morning swim. But we hope to see him even burying his time and for the rest of the world to know that he's coming for them. Yes, that's uh, Hendrik van der swimming out of lane six. Another van der in lane seven. And uh, we've got Kamarane puts into Freitas from two to four, respectively. Here we go for the men's 100 breaststroke. And away they go. Very good start from Kamarane. Puts. Very good start from Puts as well. Jeez. He's going out. Straight out the water. You know, it, it was interesting because he came to me and uh, after he gave me his big hug, uh, he was saying that he went back to the hotel and he put on the broadcast of this to study exactly. And he said he reckons he made one or two mistakes. His bum wasn't in the water enough, if I'm not mistaken. He wanted to recorrect that. Absolutely. He's the kind of person that will go back and analyze every single stroke uh, because he wants to get better. You know, um, he needs to get a 110 to get a Paralympic time. So, and he's turning around about 35, the same as, his, well, 36. So hopefully he'll be able to come back a little bit harder, you know. Um, but he normally finishes good. And as you can see, he's picking up the stroke rate over there. And um, you've got Caleb uh, van der Merwe here on the side, also going into the 40. And then um, I'm just looking at quickly, 46.65 for Hendrik. So he's still on time to, to get to, to the time that he did this morning. OK, and, uh, and that time was astounding. Uh, so we've got Aaron Putz uh, making his way to the finisher. A glorious time. The time that he needs. I uh, he needed to get a 110, okay. so he's just going to be slightly off. But it, uh, I think it's going to be a really good swim for him this uh, tonight. OK, Aaron Putz touching down uh, ahead of Kamarane over in lane two. Here we have lane four with the Freitas coming home and the two Fundamabas. You have a Hendrik coming through now. Hendrik's time earlier today, 1.43.21. Let's see how he does now. He's fatiguing a little bit over there on those last few strokes, but let's see if he can stretch it out. He might just put on a little bit of time there. Okay, and able to beat his earlier time from the day, but a very good time nonetheless. 1.45.38. What do you make of those times? Um, phenomenal times. Um, once again, like, I mean, he's still under the uh, NQS time for Paralympics, so he's done it now twice back to back. Um, I think uh, Hendrik did say this afternoon at lunch that he, he needs to race a little bit more um, because he does fatigue very quickly. He does, uh, he's got big arms, so obviously uh, <laughs> he, he does uh, pack quite a bit of lactate. Um, but yeah, a lack of racing, um, that's something that he needs to work on. And um, I'm sure he's going to go back to, uh, to um, Ty Slattery to make sure that he gets more racing experience done. And uh, Ty Slattery, of course, uh, one of the legends of uh, Paralympics, uh, a legendary South African. He was a flag bearer, if I'm not mistaken. Correct, he was. Um, you know, uh, uh, all credit to him. I mean, uh, going to six Paralympic Games, um, I think he equals Ernest van Dijk. Uh, that's uh, one of our other uh, uh, Paralympic heroes. Um, uh, they equal on the amount of numbers, uh, number of times that they've gone to Paralympics. Um, and it's going to be taking a, a long time. Remember, it's every four years. So if you add that up, it's quite a long time yeah. to actually be competing at this high level. Um, so it's going to take a very long time for anybody to surpass that. Uh, my everlasting memory of Ty Slattery is always his outlandish hairstyles that he used to carry with him at, uh, at the various games. Um, just a little insight on him. This guy yeah. can grow hair. Um, at a drop of a penny. Um, this guy can come and shave his hair and tomorrow he'll, uh, he'll have long hair again. <laughs> um, as you can see right now, he's, uh, he's got a massive uh, bocky and long hair. That's to the tribute to his mom, Dea Slattery, that's uh, uh, battling cancer. She's been formidable in, uh, in our uh, Paralympic movement. She's done all the classifications and everything, and he's growing his hair for his mom uh, to get well, to get better. Wow. And um, we just want to give a shout out to Dea and say that we, we're missing her. And we hope that one day she'll be able to come and uh, see how well Ty Simmons has been doing. Oh, lovely. Well, I certainly echo those sentiments. Ty Slattery uh, doing phenomenal work in the coaching 
world uh, following his uh, amazing efforts when he was a competitor himself. Yeah, the stories just get better and better uh, when you talk about the, the Paralympians as well as the Olympians, of course. We move over now to the next set of uh, races. Uh, we go over to Backstroke, the women's 100. Uh, before we get over to that, uh, I've got to ask Tatiana Schoenmacher this evening. She'll be doing a time trial to replicate what she will experience over in Tokyo in that she'll be competing in heat, semi-finals and a final. Correct. Um, I think it's a very smart move from, um, uh, from Rocco. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately, our trials only allow to have heats and finals. And being able to put a time trial, unfortunately, she'll be swimming by herself because a time trial will only be ratified if they swim by themselves. As soon as there's another swimmer in the pool, that time will not be counted as her official time. So then you'll see that uh, Kaylee Corbett and uh, Tatiana will be swimming separately, but it's to give them the opportunity, like you said, of heats, semis, and finals. And that will be exactly what they'll be doing at Olympics. So I think it's a great move from, uh, uh, from uh, Rocco to be able to do something like that. Oh, man, really, really good move. So uh, we'll be seeing Tatiana Skunamak in action again a little later by herself as we move over to the women's 100 backstroke. And it is the first of two finals, the B final. Uh, moving down from lanes one to eight. Kelsey Monroe, Kiara Nerd, Zoe Phillips, Taylor Yonker, Grace Hudson, Samantha Randall, Georgia Nell, and Donata Katai. Katai swimming out of Zimbabwe. Uh, some big names uh, taking part now. Interesting enough, in lane seven is Georgia Nell. Her sister is the fastest quali uh, qualifier, Olivia Nell. Um, and uh, yeah, they always have a, t a good tussle in the backstroke, but unfortunately she didn't make it into the A final. Yeah, we actually chatted to Olivia today straight after she competed and she was out of breath uh, for the entire interview. I mean, obviously she would be, but I think we watched like two or three races and came back to Olivia and she was still out of breath. Just shows how much they exert when they are racing. But uh, yeah, let's go into the racing right now. And away they go, Taylor Yonker, good start, as well as Grace Hudson. Uh, yeah, speaking to Olivia Nell, uh, they are off to the States uh, a couple of, in a couple of months' time, I think, uh, University of South Carolina. I think so. Uh, that's the rumors that I've heard, and um, I'm sure they're going to enjoy it over there. Okay, one of them competing right now, Georgia, over in lane seven, but it is uh, Taylor Yonker, Grace Hudson, going along rather nicely, as is now also in uh, the far uh, lane. It's uh, lane eight. Uh, Donata Katai looking good, but geez, little to choose between these competitors at the turn. Uh, leading the way, only just we've got Grace Hudson, uh, 31.54 ahead of uh, Kiara Nodes, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Samantha Randall also very much up there. Georgia Nell going along very, very nicely as uh, they make their way to the finish. Uh, about uh, 25 meters uh, left to go for these swimmers. Let's see them in action. This is going to be a very tight finish. This is going to be another nice uh, finish from this uh, race and backstroke is always exciting on the last few strokes. Zoe Phillips looking good. Uh, meanwhile, over in lane five, Great Hudson coming back. Phillips looking very, very good. I think Phillips will get there. Phillips does. And only just Zoe Phillips over in lane three, uh, finishing just ahead of uh, it was Grace Hudson coming home in second place. George Nell was also right up there. Uh, what a swim from Zoe Phillips. Fantastic. You could see that uh, after that uh, on the last 25, she really picked up a kick, got her hips up nice and high and picked up the stroke rate. And uh, that gave her the win on the last five meters. Yeah, man, that was a terrific race. Great entertainment value. I mean, geez, uh, probably six or seven competitors uh, were right in there until the very end confirmation of those results. Zoe Phillips finishing first, Grace Hudson second, Georgia Nell rounding off the top three. Just uh, in terms of qualification times, the women's backstroke, uh, that Olympic qualification time, one minute point two five. And uh, unfortunately, looking over at the A final times, their prelims, um, doesn't look like anyone's likely to get there. I mean, it's a, it's a very tough ask when it comes to the 100 backstroke. Absolutely. It's one hell of a tough race um, as it is. And uh, you, ne you need to make sure in the morning heats that you basically set yourself up in order to get as close to that time as possible if you want to go for it in the evening. Um, you don't what want do to you mean by that in terms of setting yourself up in the morning? Look, if you're not swimming uh, heats and semis, you only have uh, two opportunities to okay, swim instead yeah. of a third. So, so it... So it... Okay. 
Okay, so let's head downstairs quickly to Matthew Six. Expecting that in my eyes after quite a hectic program already, uh, superb to go under 420. Um, Matt's got the 100 fly tomorrow and the 200 IM, two big ones coming up where he is hoping on qualifying for Tokyo 2021. But Matt, yeah, I still think that was a great race. How did you feel in that race? Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I guess it was, uh, I think the bad race was just with past bats. Went out a bit hard. Um, uh, I went out the time that I, I would do my turn at IM in the fly. So, uh, yeah, but we, we, I learned from it and then we're moving on. Tomorrow's a uh, under fly and that's going to be a, that's going to be a big one. But I do actually reckon that if you work that backstroke, the 400 IM could definitely be an event in the future. So well done on that one and good luck for the rest of the gala. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, David Glover and Matthew Sates. You know, I was uh, sitting here with Chad Leclerc during Matt's race and Matt uh, beating Chad yesterday in the 200 uh, freestyle. And it was amazing. Chad was cheering Matt on during the IM and he was visibly disappointed. He was exceptionally disappointed that Matt missed out in that Olympic time. I think he wants to see him uh, as part of the team and um, because he knows that that's uh, our future that's right there. Uh, somebody that he can hand over to uh, for the future and um, he can actually help groom uh, Matt States into into something that could be formidable. You know, I think he sees a lot of himself in, in Matt, the way they race, the, the heart, the in, uh, intensity and I think that is what it's all about. So, you know, we need um, guys like uh, Chad to, to step up and help our youngsters to become better swimmers on the international stage. Mm, yeah, what a talent, Jeez, what a future he holds. And as you heard David Glover said, he's still got plenty of opportunities uh, in other events. Absolutely, he's got two big ones. Uh, unfortunately, the 100 fly and the 200 IM is always on the same day. <laughs> um, at some point in time, he will have to choose between those races because it becomes really difficult, as, especially on world stage. But you know what, he's such a phenomenal athlete. Um, um, at, at an event like this, he'll be able to take it in his stride. Okay, that's uh, Matthew Saints just missing out on Olympic qualification in uh, the IM for men, the 400. Uh, however, he did uh, win his race, um, but uncomfortably so, as we move over to the A final. Strezica, Doster, Haps, Nell, Mida, Lantman, Pierce, and De Villiers. Olivia Nell had a very, very good swim today. We spoke about Georgia a little earlier. We spoke about Olivia, who was seated in the seat where Theo is right now. Let's see if she can repeat the feat this time around. And there they go, Karen Habs with a very good start, as did uh, Rebecca Mida, uh, Null just a, a little bit behind. Uh, she'll want to catch up. In fact, a very, very bad start from Null. Uh, she had a slip there. I don't know what happened. I don't know if the, um, if the thing actually moved, um, but that was a terrible start. Now she's going to have to work really hard to get, get right up there in contention. So I think she's going to be very disappointed with that. OK, cool. So uh, Null just behind it. She's making a bit of a comeback. But uh, way out in front, uh, Rebecca Mida for now making the turn. And, uh, geez, Nell has uh, managed to come back very, very well. But uh, Rebecca Mida going along very, very confidently at the turn. Uh, Rebecca Mida sound 30.39. Looking good is Rebecca Mida. No, I think Rebecca is definitely going to take this one quite comfortably. I mean, she's a strong finisher as what we've seen in all the races. So, But uh, I think Olivia now will be very disappointed because she would have been in for a shot. Okay, Rebecca Mida pulling away very, very well, and she will grab the victory confidently. So, a tremendous victory for Rebecca Mida. 102 to 8. Uh, looking at uh, who came through in second place, it looks as if it may have been Hannah Pierce, if I'm not mistaken, with a 104.59. But Rebecca, Rebecca Mida dominating the competition with that. A tremendous swim from her. Yeah, and I think uh, we just mentioned it yesterday about um, giving all backstrokers an even playing field. And uh, with uh, something like that, with a mal malfunction, we can actually see if they didn't have that, the kind of uh, effort that they would have had um, in a slip. Doesn't make for um, even racing. So that's why we do have these ledges to make everybody start properly. It's just very unfortunate for her that uh, things went wrong. Just a recap for us. I know we spoke about it last night for those that are joining us for the first time regarding those ledges. Uh, when did they come in officially as uh, apparatus to, to be used for the backstroke? It, it came in a couple of years ago at uh, one of the FINA World Champs and uh, where they tried it out. And obviously it was passed um, and uh, it's already been used in one Paralympics uh, and Olympics. Um, but it, it's purely been, uh, been designed so that everybody has a fair start. 
um, you know, in backstroke, uh, being in the water, some of the touch pads can be slippery, and it also helps the guys not to go in there and put some uh, surfer wax on onto the boards, as what uh, like it, it's been documented before oh, wow. that people has done that. <laughs> um, but uh, I think it just gives for even starts, fair starts, just like the kickback on on the on the blocks, so that everybody has the best opportunity to be competitive. No, mm, oh, well, it's, it's great to see. Unfortunately for uh, George and I missing out uh, there, but uh, yeah, it has been uh, a tremendous effort. I say George and I, apologies, Olivia and Nell, she would be very, very disappointed with what took place there. But uh, take nothing away from Rebecca Mida, who dominated the competition, 102-28. That was a tremendous, tremendous effort from her. Absolutely, and I think she got so close, um, she could have dipped uh, under 102 and that would have been a phenomenal swim for her. And uh, But also, once again, what a talented girl. I think she's going to be, well, she's definitely going to be in the 200. I am one of her favorite races, and uh, that's one of those uh, races that she will be looking at, uh, at trying to get the qualifying time for Olympics. Okay, well, we've seen the women uh, in the backstroke. Now we move over to the men. Uh, not a lot of competitors in the B final, only three before we move over to the A final, including Peter Kutzer, who's been one of the revelations. And, you know, funny enough, Chad was speaking about it. He said he didn't even really know who Peter Kutzer was before uh, coming to Quebec. And uh, he said the guy's so big, he looks like he's 25 years old. He wanted to call him Um, and he's got a big physique, and he's a talented swimmer. And he's only 16. Jeez. Um, I was sitting up there uh, before he went to his coach, Rocco, and um, this boy has got massive feet. He is a big structure. Um, and just turning 16 um, to, to be swimming these kind of times, and he makes it look so easy. Um, this morning, uh, doing a 54-1, we were all sitting there hoping that he could actually dip under that time to get the qualifying time at 53.85. But I think he's got another opportunity now. And hopefully, Swimming South Africa will consider swimming a medley relay. We'll have another chance of wow. getting a qualifying time. Because he's leading off on backstroke, that will give him an opportunity to qualify. For, uh, so he'll have three swims. Okay, so that is Peter Kutz, a uh, highly talented individual and only 16 years of age. First up, though, it is the B final. Ethan Spake in three, JP Seyfert in four, and uh, Volmerans in five. Martin Volmerans, uh, two of those swimmers swimming out of the Eastern Cape, and we've got Ethan Spaker representing Tux. Uh, no surprises there, uh, swimming out of Tswane. I'm about to take to the water. David Glover speaking about uh, a couple of these swimmers. A lot of them swimming, representing him. So about to take to the water. And away they go. The first final in the men's 100 backstroke. Spaker safe at Volmerantz. Fast start from all three. And it looks like these guys are going to definitely be chasing each other. Uh, there's only three of them, so they don't have many places to look at. And uh, so they can just keep on focusing on their own race and racing each other. Yeah, there they go. JP Seyfert looking good uh, over in lane two, as do they all. Uh, who's going to touch first? It looks as if it's, in fact, yo, wow. only just over in lane five. Volmerans just edging ahead. In fact, it was Seyfert uh, first up, followed by Volmerans, uh, followed by Spaker, but all 28. And uh, the key is now, who's going to reach the wall first? As, As you can uh, see, the turn was very important. Uh, JP came off that wall much better, and he's already in the lead now. JP fighting hard. Look at him go in the middle lane. JP pulling daylight between himself and the rest now. More than a body length clear, and he will grab the victory. Very, very well done. And his Eastern Cape teammate will grab second. And uh, in third position, it is Spaker. So safe at Volmerans, followed by Spaker. Uh, JP, the only man to dip below uh, the 59, well, uh, underneath a minute, but uh, for underneath 59 too. Absolutely. And if you look at the top eight coming out now for the A final, he could have been there. So I think he, he tried to prove a point in that race that he was capable of going um, in the A final. Okay. So JP safe at 58.81 for him. He'll be uh, happy with that performance. Those are all from the Seyfat clan, also the Eastern Capers. Unfortunately, only Eastern Capers in the building right now are fellow swimmers. Yeah. 58. So the men emerging from the water. As we move over 
to the men for the A final. So looking at the lineup, again, some talented individuals competing in this one. There's the lineup right there. Guy Brooks, Andrew Ross, Martin Benedel, Peter Kutsia, Ian Fenter, Rowan van Rieden, Liam Vierby, and Vickers Portkitter. Martin Benedel looked very good today, but Peter Kutsia certainly the man to watch at the end. Absolutely. I think he's going to be blistering out uh, at a massive, like, fast pace. Um, but there's a few guys that I can see uh, also does some 50 backstrokes, so hopefully they'll be able to push uh, Peter out and uh, make sure that he gets out in the right time to, to be able to get this qualifying time. Yeah, you can hear the cheers from the crowd. They know this is a big one. Some big guys taking part, and uh, you can see Peter Kutsia over in lane four, a very big guy, only 16 years of age. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Huge. Um, and uh, you can see his body type uh, is suited for backstroke, and um, it's nice to see. I'm looking forward to this race. Why do you say his body type suited to backstroke? He's nice and skinny. Uh, gi gives him a lot of uh, body uh, uh, surface on the water. Um, so you, you normally tend to see that guys are that tall. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Who was that? That was Ross again. Ross again. <laughs> so every single time he changed up the entry. <laughs> and here we go, an eagerly awaited event, the men's 100 backstroke. <laughs> and away they go. And Peter Kutsia already away, but closely followed by Benadol and Ian Fenter either side of him. It's going to be a very fast race this year. Absolutely. You're going to see Martin going out as hard um, and try to get him on the turn. But I think now he's already pulling away um, because he wants to swim. He wants to get this race. OK, so the Olympic qualifying time, 53.85. That's the time he is gunning for. And he makes the turn in 26.45 here. Yeah? Absolutely. I think he's still on target for this. Uh, this morning, he slowed down on the last five meters. If he can hang in there on the last five meters and get a good touch, he's going to get the sum. So it is Peter Kutzer, the man to watch out for. You can hear the crowd waving him on. Will he get an Olympic qualifying time? 53.85 is that qualifying oh. time. 53.85, currently sitting at 50. Will he get there? Close. It's going to be very close. Let's see what he gets. 54.25, just out of Olympic qualification reach. Wow. I think uh, it just came down to that last five meters again. Uh, just anticipation of that uh, finish. Um, he's got to just put his head down. He knows where the wall is. He needs to just get into that wall. He's going to get that time. Yeah, you can see the disappointment etched on his face. He got the victory comfortably so. But wow. Yeah. And Martin Binnendal, uh obviously 56.47. Uh, we knew he was going to be up there. Um, I think he would have liked to have gone faster, but he did give himself a, a proper chance uh, going out hard on that first 50 and slamming that turn. Uh, that was a phenomenal turn from Ma Martin. Uh, yeah, you can't uh, beat experience Martin Pinadal, the 25-year-old out of KZN. Also, Ian Fenter putting in a very good effort, 22 years old uh, from the Eastern Cape, rounding off the top three. But uh, it was good to see Pinadal and Fenter. Good to see just missing out on Olympic qualification. Uh, there's confirmation of his time, 54.25. The time he needed to get uh, was 53.85. I mean, there's, there's nothing in it. Uh, let's have a look back at uh, what we just saw. So that tells a lot there. There we go. That, that was his chance. Uh, he had that slip uh, once again. Uh, we've spoken about, wow. I don't know if I'm jinxing this right now, but uh, should be a fair start for everybody. Um, but I don't know. We'll have to see what the, whether the officials has picked that up um, and what they're going to do about that, you know. Because if Nell, if Nell had the slip, that was also in lane four. It's correct. Same, same lane. So there must be something wrong there. So I think that's something that the officials need to look at uh, very quickly because we can't have uh, finals being swum where people are slipping and not getting their times. OK, well, we'll have a look. But uh, yeah, uh, Peter could see, unfortunately, uh, missing out uh, on that Olympic record or Olympic qualification time. And uh, it moves over to the next event. So we'll move and see what uh, else has taken place as we ready ourselves for the next event. The men's 100 backstroke done and dusted. And now we move over to the 50 butterfly, Theo.
S14, S15. Another exciting one. These girls swam phenomenally well this morning. And um, I know that uh, all of them had uh, PBs. So I'm looking forward to seeing whether they can even go faster tonight. Okay, so exciting to see. We've got Kretzen, Janssen van Rensburg and Marais all in action. There's uh, lanes four to six. For this, the 50 butterfly. Uh, Minka um, did a really good swim. She's getting close and closer to that world record, uh, the junior world record in her category. Um, and hopefully tonight she'll be able to pull this one off again. Do you have the time there for the junior world record? I do not have okay. uh, it on my uh, on hand, but I know it's about a second off uh, okay. on where, what she swam this morning. Okay, jeez, it was a great, another great swim from Minka, Janssen van Rensburg, Michaela Kretzen in lane four. Katie Marais in lane six. Minka swimming out of the Western Cape, as well as Kretzen and Johannesburger Katie Marais. And away they go. Good start from Kretzen. And a reminder once again, different categories of swimmers yet, yeah? Correct, uh, we've got uh, one S, uh, two S14s and an S10 swimming together in, the, in this uh, particular event. Um, so it will look unfair, but um, it does get calculated at the end. The closest swimmer to their respective world record will get the win. Okay, so there we have it. But uh, yeah, swimming in lane six, Katie Marais slightly ahead of uh, Kretzen. Only just Kretzen making a bit of a comeback. But remember, competing in different categories. Kayla Kretzen coming home nicely in a time of 37.72. Marev 37.41. And here we have Janssen van Rensburg 46.93. Pia? Yeah, all three of these uh, ladies uh, went PBs now again. Uh, phenomenal. Um, you know, from, from a para point of view, we have to be able to get up and, um, and, and some back-to-back -back races. Um, unfortunately, in South Africa, we don't always have that opportunity until we get to trials or to, to um, senior nationals. Um, but we've got to get them that exposure to swim twice in one day. Okay, geez. Well, uh, you're really, really good to see another great effort from the swimmers. In this, the 50-meter butterfly, uh, it was S14, S15, S1, and S13. We'll uh, get to watch the men in action shortly. We'll get to see another chance of seeing Ethan Pulse in action. Absolutely. Uh, he, was so, he was so excited after his 100 fly last night. Uh, he was smiling ear to ear, and uh, he said uh, this afternoon while, while we warmed up, he said definitely he's going to try his best to get under 29. I know that's one of his PBs and one of his personal best for the for, for uh, lifetime best. And um, he said he wants to go for it tonight. Okay, so excited to see him in action. He'll be up against the Freitas uh, and uh, Puts. So it's been impressive to see all these competitors in action here. We've uh, got confirmation of what you can expect to see over the next uh, couple of races. Men's S14, 15, 50 fly. Then it's the men S1, S13, 50 fly. And uh, following that will be the women's freestyle, where I'll be getting Wayne Ridden to, to come uh, alongside and chat a little bit. I know he's excited to see Tatiana Schoenmacher. He's actually put out a, a whole host of numbers um, that he's focused on in terms of his splits. I mean, Wayne Ridden, uh, a, a legend of swimming here in SA, and uh, certainly uh, he's been very prominent throughout uh, the, these, this event. Absolutely. He's got some phenomenal swimmers here. Matt, uh, Matty State um, is, is one of his swimmers, and he's done a phenomenal job. I mean, we saw that 200 freestyle yesterday. To be the legend um, and being at that age is just phenomenal. Um, and uh, Wayne uh, had it down to the T. He told me um, uh, at warm-up yesterday that he, he knew exactly what, uh, what his swimmer needed to do. Okay, so we'll be hearing from Wayne Ridden in a short while. But uh, first off, let's move over to the men's 50 Butterfly S14 and S15. De Freitas, Pulsa puts from lanes three down to five, leading the way. It is Pulsa over in lane four. As you can see, Pulsa had a fantastic start and underwater, and uh, that momentum is just carrying him forward now. Okay, watch them go. It is Eaton Pulsa over in lane four. Aaron puts and De Freitas either side of him. 
But Paulsa going along very, very nicely. Paulsa will cruise home to that finish. Let's see the time. This is going to be a great wow. time. 29.54, Theo. That's a very, very good swim. A little bit slower than... Uh, well, actually, it's a little bit faster than this morning. So wow. he definitely got closer to his PB. I think to go 29.54 is very, very good. And um, then we've got Putsi over there uh, just putting on a few splits. Um, but Raymond De Freitas actually did a massive PB there, a 33.19. So I think that was for, like he kept it, uh, kept it for the final. Okay, so uh, there we have the three swimmers. Uh, another terrific swim from Paulsa. Puts and De Freitas wrapping up the men's 50 butterfly S14 and S15 as uh, we finish things off in that event with the 50 fly S1, S13. Uh, yet, uh, I know we chatted a bit about, about this uh, yesterday, but uh, it really doesn't feel like a weekend. Of course, we've just been experiencing life in a hotel and, uh, and, and here. But, I mean, do the guys treat it like a weekend at all? It's a Saturday. It's... I've, I don't. If you walk up to any swimmer and tell them which day it is, they're probably not going to be able to tell you right now. They know it is day three or day four of racing. That's how they operate because they know their races on certain days, um, and that's how they operate. Oh, it's uh, great to hear because it really is. Uh, it's been amazing to see actually just everyone going from the hotel straight to the pool and back again, putting in training, putting in non-stop. It's. Uh, it's terrific to see and uh, as we head over to the next event it's the men's 50 butterfly we've got cabello zwane matthew moss christian sardi van der Mava, and james willers um sardi geez, uh, he's been impressive he's been impressive i think uh, uh tonight uh, hopefully he's going to be able to get close to that 30 or just breaking that 30 that will really set him up it's one of his paralympic events um and then you've got um matthew moss that actually did a massive pb this uh, this morning phenomenal swim from him and, uh, and Jane Willis uh, beating his time by five seconds from, from his morning swim. So I think uh, they all all in for, for a good swim. And James Willis, of course, uh, the, the youngster of the group. Indeed Jeez. he is. Um, he's actually a, also deaf. He's a S15 classified, but he's also an amputee. Um, uh, below the, well, I think it was below the knee, so he's an S10 in, in uh, swimming now. So um, he can basically uh, choose which category he wants to swim in. Okay. And uh, he'll be swimming out of lane six, will uh, James Willis. You can see the focus on Christian. He's ready for this race, just like he did this uh, last night. Um, his coach, Keith, did tell me that he will be asking for a time trial on the last day for the 53. He wants to get under that uh, that the special mark um, and and get his time down. Okay, so here we go. It is uh, the men's 50 butterfly S1 and S13, the last uh, event uh, of the stroke uh, for the night, at least. Watch out for Christian Sardi in lane four, the 23-year-old swimming out of the Western Cape. Again, a reminder: different categories. And away they go. Christian Sardi getting off to another great start. Once again, uh, this boy off the off the start is just phenomenal, and look at him go underwater. I mean, and uh, he's just got carries so much momentum into his butterfly. It's just so awesome to see. See okay, Christian Sadi looking superb over in the water. Also in lane five, we've got uh, Fanamava going along nicely, as is uh, James Willers. But uh, it is Christian Sadi in this specific category dominating matters. He will touch home in first place, and uh, a 30.91, Theo. 30.91 is about the time that he went uh, this morning. Um, so unfortunately, he did, didn't get under 30, but he did make his um, MQS time. So very happy with that. And then we've got Caleb van der uh, that went 32.62 for an SO record this morning, and he broke his SO record again. So 30, 32.26 is another SO record for Caleb. So we've got another MQS time and another SO record uh, to bank uh, for, for the Paris swimmers. That is sensational. So another terrific swim uh, from those competing in the men's 50 butterfly. Uh, congratulations uh, to a few more records broken. It's about every night we just get to repeat uh, what we keep on saying. The records continue to tumble it keeps on tumbling and if you look at uh, james willis over there he did a massive pb to go 33 20 from this morning's 33 96 so these guys are just performing so well in, in the evening and i think they get uh, the momentum from from the able body guys so they they see each other race they get excited 
and they're just moving in the right direction. Oh, Theo, it's been amazing to have you on board. I'm going to bring uh, Wayne Ridden over, but uh, again, uh, terrific to have you back and uh, hopefully see you tomorrow. I'll definitely be around. Thank Lovely you so stuff. much. Appreciate it. Thanks so much, uh, Theo Fester, uh, swimming legend, coaching legend. He's heading over to Tokyo. Of course, he'll be coaching these tremendous athletes that you've seen in the water, and he will be back. Thanks so much, Theo. So we'll be going downstairs in a short while time for the next set of interviews, hopefully. Up next, we've got uh, the women's 400 freestyle. SA and Africa record held by Karen Prinsler, 407.92. In the B final, we'll be having Hannah Pierce, Carly Antonopoulos, Tori Earl, Amica Diyaka, and Gina Miller. Joining me now, a man who needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him one anyway. I know we spoke about it a little earlier. We'll head down for an interview shortly. But uh, Wayne Ridden, welcome aboard. Oh, thanks, Derek been a busy evening <laughs> <laughs> been extremely busy evening before we come to you we'll head downstairs quick David Glover does have another man he wants to chat to who's uh, following a, a great race that we have seen so far okay David says he's not quite ready so we'll get back to him a little later as uh, we head towards the women's 400 freestyle Hannah Pierce Carly Antonopoulos Tori Earl Amica Diaka and Gina Miller. And in they go, Wayne, what do you make of this race? Well, it is the B final, um, Derek. So, you know, there's uh, one of my little favorites in there is Tori Earl. And, um, you know, she's a bit more of an open water swimmer. So I'm sure that she'll be putting a bit of pressure on them. She goes up to 10 kilometers. Okay, uh, Tori Earl, and if if ever there's a man who knows about open water swimming, it is the one sitting right next to me. Uh, they considered naming, renaming uh, the Midmar Mile the Ridden Mile <laughs> at one stage. <laughs> Given his numerous uh, wins over there and also having hosted it on uh, plenty of occasions. Uh, but here we go. One lap in and uh, leading the way, we have Gina Miller at exactly 30 seconds at the first turn as... Uh, they come through for the second lap. Watch out for Tori Earl over in lane four, as Wayne said. But it is still over in lane six, going along rather nicely. Is Gina Miller. Impressive stuff so far. Yeah, I think um, why I'm saying um, Tori Earl is because in the 200, when she um, was in the final there, in the B final there, she went 208. So I think she's probably due for a closer to a 422 or 423 than um, than the time she did this morning. Okay, so, so I'm sure that she'll put pressure. But then again, you know, the few of them would probably prefer to be in the B final if they were going to be on the outside lanes of the A final. It's better to be, go for a good race here. So we may see some good times from them. Okay, so uh, two laps in, two out of eight, and uh, leading the way, we've got Gina Miller still out in front, 137.51, and uh, she is slightly ahead of uh, Carly Antonopoulos. Uh, impressive stuff from Carly too, swimming out of KZN. Tori Earl, another KZN swimmer. Uh, Hannah Pierce from the Western Cape. And we've got an Eastern Cape swimmer slapped uh, right in the middle there. And that is Amica de Yarka. As uh, we make our way towards uh, the halfway stage of this race. Still impressed with what you've seen so far? Yeah, well, if you have a look here now, you'll see that um, the two K KZN girls will start making an impact there. And you'll see that Tori Earl is gonna just sit on Carly Antonopoulos. Carly is probably the stronger finisher um, if she gets away. Um, also an open water swimmer, but um, as I say, Toriel, it reminds me of one of these tough little people, you know, so yeah. <laughs> that, that will keep going. But, um, you know, it's, it's nice chatting to a person like Carly Antonopoulos when she races the 10 kilometers as well. And 
when I admire some of the swimmers out there, when there is a bad race, they accept it and they move on. Mm. And I've had a, quite a few chats to her, and I must say I'm quite impressed with the way she, she approaches a, a bad swim. So when she gets into a good space like she's probably there, you know, and she doesn't, I'm sure she, she trains with Tori, so she'll know everything about Tori. So I think you're going to end up with a really good time from the two of them here. Okay, so Carly Antonopoulos still leading the way, incidentally, uh, the Tokyo qualifying time, 4.0790. The prelim times of these swimmers coming in uh, way out of that, so that won't be threatened. Uh, but yeah, Carly Antonopoulos still out in front over in lane three going along rather nicely and uh, she'll make the turn in 320.67 just ahead of Turi Earl with Amika Diaka coming in third spot for now uh, with two laps to go. Yeah, so I think um, looking at the way Carly's going there, you know, you could end up with about a 427 or 428, um, you know, so a little bit faster than what they would be this morning. Uh, just uh, quickly, uh, well, we'll get back to that a little later. Let's uh, focus on this race for now. Uh, but yeah, as we uh, head towards the final turn of the women's uh, B final in the 400 meter freestyle and uh, still out in front over in lane three, Carly Antonopoulos going along very, very nicely. Uh, Jesus, is this going to be a tight finish or does uh, Carly have this wrapped up? Yeah, she's got it wrapped up, I'm sure. You know, she's a strong kid. And as I say, they, they, they're used to finishing hard on 10 kilometers. So you're not going to close that, mu that much of a gap. Um, obviously, Tori will try. Um, but I must say, for for Carly, I think she'll she'll enjoy this one because she's needed one or two good swims to get herself going. Yeah, well, good it is indeed. It's better than good as Carly Antonopoulos comes home to capture the victory. That is a sensational swim, 4:28:36, and she'll finish ahead of Tori Earl, 4:31:79. So Carly Antonopoulos uh, only dipping under 4:29. Yeah, so you know, certainly she she wanted a better swim than her 800 early on in the week as well. Um, she wasn't happy with that and um, she's obviously going to focus a little bit more after this tournament as well on, the, on a longer distance but both tori and um, carly do prefer the open water swimming so it's nice that they actually test themselves in, in the pool swimming as well mm, yeah certainly so well uh, they did test themselves and they were found very very impressive let's head downstairs now and see who david glover has for us Okay, just waiting for confirmation uh, from David. Okay, it looks as if uh, we do have someone waiting in the wings. Uh, you don't have to lean down to the map. We'll be joining them shortly. Just confirmation of what you just witnessed. Carly Antonopoulos winning the women's 400 free in a time of 4.28.36, finishing ahead of Tori Earl and Gina Miller. Some very, very impressive swims. And we've got Peter Kutzia. Yeah. And we've got Peter Kutzia here with us after his 100 backstroke. I was chatting to him earlier and he said he had a slight slip at the beginning of the race, but with that time of 54.25 just off the Olympic qualifying time, I'm sure he will have another opportunity. There should be a Grand Prix coming up and maybe one more here. So I don't think it's the end of the world. So well done on a great time. Were you happy with that race? Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I'd say I was happy with the race overall. Um, it was just the start that, that let me down a bit, but I'm grateful for more opportunities to try and get the time. Um, I enjoyed the race overall. Yeah. Yeah, you've had a great race in the 50, 100 and 200 back, so you can be really proud of yourself. And good luck for any further races you have at this competition. Well done. Thank you very much. Cool. Good to hear from Peter Kutsit. Jeez. And uh, oh, it looks like we've got someone else that will be joining us, Rebecca Mida. Let's uh, continue uh, with the interviews. All yours, Dave. And I've also got Rebecca after her 100 meters backstroke. This girl, really versatile, been swimming in all strokes. I think she swam breaststroke, backstroke, freestyle, just hasn't swum butterfly. But yeah, doing a great, um, having a great gala. How did you feel about that 100 back? I know you wanted to go 101, but it was pretty close. Are you satisfied? Yeah. 
think I can be satisfied with that. Um, I was hoping to dip under the 102. Uh, yeah, I've done it before, so I was like, OK, let's do it again. But obviously, it wasn't um, part of the plan tonight. And uh, we've got the 4x1 free relay coming up now, which we we're hoping to qualify on. And I'm anchoring that one. So hopefully, I can bring it home really strong for the team. Well, one thing I really noticed about you is your positive mindset. And it's great to have someone looking so optimistic around the pool deck. So keep it up, and good luck for the relay just now. Thank you so much, David. Thank you very much, David. Thank you very much, uh, Rebecca Mida. Two uh, outstanding talents uh, into, on show there. Wayne? Yeah, you know, the people must remember that uh, Peter Kutzer is, is just 16 years old. Mm. And um, anybody doing a time like that at 16 for a 100 backstroke, is, it's phenomenal. You know, his um, entry time was 55.88. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard for kids that are that age to drop that much uh, up in the senior competition. Mm. So certainly, you know, it really helps us for the future because, you know, we've got some really talented juniors coming up. And I wouldn't mind betting that um, he's a guy that uh, could be a gold medal prospect for the Junior Worlds in, in August. Oh, well, you heard it here first uh, from Wayne Ridden. And if anyone knows uh, potential talent, it certainly is him. As we move over to the next event, it's the A final now of the women's 400 freestyle. Kutze, Kutzea, Van Rensburg, Kutzea, Robertson, Rolfi, McMorrin, and Robson. And in they go. Who are you backing here, Wayne? Uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not an easy one there, but um, I would imagine that um, Janae Kutsi is probably the one um, to watch. Um, she's given a few different um, performances here this week. Um, in the 200 free, you know, in the heat, she went out really hard. So it'll be interesting to see what her tactics are here. The difference is that she goes out hard. She's not one to tire too much. So if she gets ahead, I think it'll be a tough one for everybody. Um, if you start looking at um, Hannah Robertson out there in lane five, um, she's one of the younger ones in the in the group, so it'll be nice to see her coming forward and doing something. So let's see what happens. Okay, well, uh, we're currently watching the women's 400 freestyle final, the A final, and uh, could see her going along strong, uh, just followed by Hannah Robertson. Danae could see her swimming out of Twane and she will be the first to turn following two laps in the water. And she's very, very closely followed by Hannah Robinson. Danae could see a time of uh, 1 minute 0.02, Wayne. Yeah, I think it's a pretty respectable time. I don't think any of them are forcing it. So, uh, you know, for, for Hannah Robinson, that's probably going to be a good thing um, because possibly um, Danae could see will pull her through to a better time. As I say, she's one of the younger ones and the potential prospect for the 4x200 freestyle relay, but she needs to get into a B qualifying time for that. And any experience she can gain in, in the 400 meter year will help her in the 200 as well. Okay, so Danae could see her pulling away somewhat from Hannah Robinson, but Hannah Robinson still uh, breathing down her neck, so to speak. But uh, as for third place, it looks as if uh, Lee McMorrin's going along rather strong. Uh, Lee McMorrin, uh, another great talent uh, swimming out of uh, Ka Ting. But uh, as for the race, uh, the front runners, it is Danae could see her leading the way uh, as we head towards the midway mark, Wayne. Yeah, you must remember that Lee McMorrin did that Junior Worlds qualifying time of 8.54 in the 800 earlier in the week, and she's much more comfortable when she goes past the 200. Um, and she went through in 4.23 in that 400 of the, of the 800, so that was also a qualifying time as well along the way in the 800. So she's also one of the younger ones coming through with a lot of talent, so it'll be nice to see if she can come in and do under 4.20 here. Okay, Danae could see her still leading the way. Hannah Robertson uh, waiting in the wings. We've also got Lee McMorrin uh, following on from a very good swim earlier in the week, but it is Danae could see her dominating matters so far. The 18-year-old, uh, her prelim time was 4.25.47. A reminder of that uh, Tokyo qualifying time, 4.0790, so that won't come into the reckoning. But that being said, uh, you'd still want Danae could see her. Well, Danae could see her would still want to get uh, a, a P. B. And uh, do you think that's on the cards, Wayne? Yeah, and you must remember out in lane um, two as well is uh, Lisa Kutsi. Um, so that's Janae's um, sister. So she's also having a really great race on, on the sideline there. So it'll be interesting to see if she can pick up a little bit as well. Okay, so it says the two Kutsias flying the flag for their family. As uh, Janae makes the turn. Two more laps to go. And Hannah Robertson 
behind Udine. You can see a 30958, Hannah Robertson 314. 15, so uh, almost a five second lead Dene has uh, over her closest competitor. Yeah, she's really going to come through fast here. Yeah, probably end up around about the 415 mark. Um, and then you look at her sister out in lane two there having a great finish. So she's doing really well and chasing down um, Hannah Robertson as well. So a great, great second half from, from Dene could see. Yeah, it really the is. The speed she comes off that wall as well, you know, so she's going to end up with a really good swim here. Okay, so currently standing at 3.50, the clock, uh, a reminder of her time that she set uh, earlier from the prelims, 4.25, 4.7. Now, I don't think uh, she's got to worry too much about that, uh, but Danae Kutsia coming home very, very strong. It really, it really is a battle for second place. You heard Wayne mention Lisa Kutsia. Uh, there she is uh, out in lane two, going along rather nicely, but Danae Kutsia will come home in a time, what's the time? Wow, 4.13.94, prelim reminder, 4.25, 4.7, what a swim, Wayne. Yeah, and she was under 105 there, even possibly under 104 on that last 100, but you could see her, her confidence at the end, and I think she needed a swim like this, looking at the way she's been swimming this week, you know, she needs something to boost herself, um, because she essentially does a lot of the tough swims, 200 fly, and good to see this 400 free finish from her. Oh, Danae Kutsia, congratulations on a brilliant, brilliant final. We'll be hearing from her a little later. The time once again uh, that she managed to complete it in uh, was uh, one. Oh, we're just getting confirmation. There we go. 413.94, followed by Hannah Robinson in second place. 421.46. And we had Lisa Kutsia, the other Kutsia, uh, doing it in 423.03. Oh, uh, Wayne, we had uh, Chad Leclerc here a little earlier, and we are watching the, the 400 IM. And, of course, we watched uh, Matthew Sates, uh, one of your protégés, uh, taking part there. And, unfortunately, just missing out uh, on, on the qualification time. Chad was visibly upset about the whole thing. He really yeah. wanted Matt to do it, uh, even though Matt beat him last night in the pool. Yeah, you know, I think um, it, it was always going to be a tough one in the decision that we had to make, does he swim it or not, because of the 100 flight tomorrow. Mm. But, um, you know, it was amazing that he went out on his first 50 there, um, you know, 15 strokes, and he was just over 25, and, and that, that speed of 54.91 on that f first 100 was just too fast, so he wasn't going to be able to maintain it. That's actually under the, the world record yeah, pace Chad that Michael Phelps that. Um, had set. So, you know, with that in mind, you know, he still held a good, good backstroke and good breaststroke, but in the, he didn't have the legs in the, in the free like he's capable of. But it's all about experience for those young guys. So, you know, we've got plenty of opportunity for that. You know, we're still focusing on junior worlds for Matthew, um, not really Olympic games. So, um, you know, but as I say, the, the, the big one is tomorrow. He loves racing Chad, and I think he just boosts himself with the race with Chad. You know? Yeah, it's going to be an exciting race tomorrow. But uh, talk us through last night's race. Uh, yeah, between those two, battling out once again. Well, you know, <laughs> we were ex expecting Chad to be the one that was going to chase out, you know, and, and just when Matt just had the first 50 fall in place, you can't slow down, so you've got to keep going, and he knows that rule. Um, and and it, it, it probably sort of baffled Chad a little bit out there as well, you know, but it, it brought him into two good times. You know, mm. Chad hasn't some at 200 free for many years. Um, you know, he's down at a 145, so, you know, if he's knocking on the door at the 148 and you've got a guy like uh, Matthew doing, you know, 148 and they go a little bit faster, there's a potential relay coming through. You know, not sure how much longer Chad's going to carry on swimming, but if we can use his, his experience to build our depth in the men, it would be great. And, and it's amazing him uh, being able to pass on that knowledge to Matt Sates because, uh, of course, they've been uh, staying together for the last month or so. It's been pretty impressive to see him. Yeah, you know, we've done a fair bit of training with uh, with Chad, and it's been great to have been mixing it with him. Um, I've tried to help Chad as well where you we can, you know, because he's in Durban, you know, we can travel down there. So we travel down to Durban and we do some long course training at King's Park. Yeah, and you based in so, Peter Marisburg, yeah? Yeah, we based in Marisburg. So, you know, we only have a short course pool. So that, that every Tuesday we used to go down there. And then um, from the Thursday to Saturday, you know, for four sessions, we would let Ch um, Matthew tra train with Chad. And Ethan would, you know, Ethan would join us as well, you know. So it was a good combination of people. Uh, to, uh, talk, you mentioned Ethan, I mean, another outstanding uh, guy and a massive future ahead yeah. for him. You know, Ethan Dupree, just, you know, so talented on that 200 fly, you know, this is one of those unique swimmers. And it was great to see him go and do another qualifier. Yeah, he done it in Durban, on the, you know, so we were really chuffed that he could do it. He has had a bit of an injury since that last qualifier. So he's come back strong. So I'm sure his coach Ballant was was really happy that he got it here as well. Mm, yeah, uh, tremendous to see. Uh, as we move over to the men's 400 freestyle, and uh, only one final taking place, uh, we'll have uh, the likes of Pretorius, Rodemer, Gomes, Low, Wright, 
Peterson and Bournemouth taking to the water. Tell us a bit more about these swimmers. Yeah, and you're looking at this field here, yeah, you know, Dante Norquia, had such a great South African short course champs, um, and um, he should be a danger man, yeah. Um, I do think that Andre Lowe has got a bit more in him there as well. Um, Brent Sudoki obviously is missing here because he's obviously got to still do a, a, an 800 as well. So, so he's going to protect himself. So, you know, we'll just see how these guys go on the first 200 and who's going to be the one who's going to try and take the lead. Okay, so hold on to your seats as uh, the men's 400 freestyle takes to the water. And away they go. It is uh, one of the final events of the night, the men's 400 freestyle. Nothing to choose between the swimmers in the early days. Good start from Gomes, Rodemeyer, and Lowe. Well, over in lane five, Henry Lowe looking very, very strong. Yeah, you'll see that uh, Dante Norki is obviously withdrawn, um, so he's missing in lane three there. So this is going to be a really uh, uh, chasing Henry Lowe all the way now, I think. Okay, so Henry Lowe, the man to catch for now. One lap into this eight-lap swim. Now remember, he's also an open water swimmer and he goes up to 10 kilometers as well. So once he gets out there and he gets going, it's, he's not an easy man to catch. Yeah, it's unbelievable when you say that. So, so nonchalantly, he goes up to 10 kilometers in the water. That is an astounding feat. But uh, Henry Lowe leading the way, 55.70. Oh, and uh, Gomes just behind him. I say just, it's uh, almost a, a two-second lead that Henry has managed to open up already. Wayne? Yeah, he's going at a nice pace here. So if he's gone out on a 55, he's obviously aiming at a time somewhere around maybe the 352 mark. So, um, you know, he's certainly a, a guy that races anything from 100 as well. You know, it's, it's, it's unusual to see a guy that concentrates on open water 10 kilometer coming into a pool and doing what he does. He even races short course, by the way. So, oh. um, you know, he's not scared to do anything. Yes, uh, a, a jack of all trades when it comes to the swimming pool is Henry Lowe. Uh, swimming out of tux, hard to miss that uh, bright red cap as he continues to cruise ahead. And uh, he's ahead of uh, Roberto Gomes, going along nicely. And uh, also on his outside, we've got Dylan Wright. Uh, he's uh, firing on. He's still also gaining, having a very nice long stroke in there for that first 200. So looking at that 156, 13, and I said a sort of a 352. He'll have to negative split it, basically, to be able to go 352. But a sub-355 here yeah, should be on the cards. OK. So great to see Henry Lowe powering along nicely. Henry Lowe firing along. Going along very, very nicely is the man from Tux as he makes his way over to one of the last laps that uh, he will be competing. Three more to go. It's past the halfway stage. 227.03 Henry Lowe currently sits at. Roberto Gomes at 229.53. And uh, it looks like it could be a, a shootout between those two. But that being said, over in lane four, Janko Rademeyer coming along strong. Gee, so impressive fight back from Janko. So two laps to go. Yeah, so you're looking at about just under that three, 355. If he really can pick it up, if you can see his legs coming in, then he's certainly going to be close to it. But he won't be caught. OK. So, very, very good effort here from Henry Lowe. Powering his way to the finish. Henry Lowe, one more lap to go. He makes the turn. And he'll make the turn in 3.28.22. A very, very impressive swim from Henry Lowe. Just behind him, Roberto Gomes, 3.31.05. Dylan Wright, 3.31.53. And that is astounding. Very, very good effort. Henry Lowe will come home. You can hear the cheers from the crowd at Tokyo Time 3.46.78. Won't be threatened. And there he comes home. Henry Lowe with the victory. Let's have confirmation of that time. 3.57.44.3. Uh, he can be happy with that, Wayne. Yeah, I'm sure he will be. Probably also a little bit out 
you know, a little bit faster out than what he should have with that 55.7. Um, if you think about it, our, our Matthew Sates went out on a 54.9 with a fly mm. in that 400 IM, so that was even harder. So uh, maybe, you know, if Andre just eases it up a little bit, he'll be able to go a bit faster at the end. But he is on a minute or so at that last 100, so that's not too bad. Wayne, it's been great having you on board. I just want to talk us through quickly. We're going to have a, a time trial a little later uh, with Tatiana taking to the water. Explain that to us quickly. All right, so obviously after yesterday's uh, 220.17, number one in the world, um, you know, the it came from her really. You know, she went up to Rocco and said, um, you know, I'd like to do a time trial. You know, so obviously with Kayleen as also another person who's done the 200 um, qualifying time already. That was in 2019 at the World Champs that she had done her time. But um, if a person like Tatania says she wants to do something, you know, she obviously means to do it well. Yeah. Let's uh, just head downstairs quickly. Uh, we are going to have David Glover standing by with our next guest. Uh, he'll be uh, chatting following another astounding swim here in Quebec. After this race, she had a great 200 free and a great 400 free. And I actually think your sister came third in that race with you. So two Kutsias in the top three. Was that a better race for you? Yeah, I would have liked to go a little bit faster, but I felt good in the race. And I'm so happy for my sister. She swam a massive PB and um, she won bronze medal. So I'm very happy for her. And yeah, I'm satisfied with how I felt in the race. As I said, I would have gone and wanted to go a bit faster. But yeah, yesterday's 200 was a great race as well. And yeah, I'm very proud of the girls I race against Rebecca and Amy, and yeah, we I'm very proud of the girls. Yeah. <laughs> Very exciting for South African female swimming with lots of opportunities for potential relays. Are you excited for that potential 4x200 free? Yeah, I'm very excited and um, I'm so happy that we can all race with each other. We've been racing against each other for so long and now that we can all race with each other, it's very, it's amazing and I'm very proud of all of the girls and we're finally getting um, girls swimming in South Africa back on track, so I'm very happy, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Danae Kutsia. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Danae Kutsia. As uh, we say goodbye to Wayne, Wayne, just uh, talk us through these numbers that we can expect uh, coming up at the time trial. Well, you know, just some stats on, on the 200 breaststroke. You know, uh, way back in 1999, Penny Haynes broke the world record about four times in a row. And then it came close and closer to, ten, to, to, to 2 minutes 20. And only three girls in the world have ever done sub 220. So Rebecca Sony had done it, um, breaking the world record in, um, in 2012 at the London Olympics. And uh, then basically it, it was um, Yulia um, Efimova who went to 219.85, but only after um, you know, the, the world record was set, which is a 219.11. Now that's only one second of, um, of Titania Schoenmarker's actual time. So you should see some excitement here so i'll leave the splits with you and you can monitor as she goes through the race um, and let's hope that kayleen corbett that can come up and actually get this qualifying time now sometimes easier to swim it on your own brilliant Jeez, well uh, thanks so much wayne it's been a pleasure having you on board as we uh, continue to watch uh, kayleen corbett take to the water uh, she's uh, doing her time trial uh, before we head over to okay here we've got kayleen's time the heats the splits and uh, yeah, exciting stuff ahead us uh, to see what uh, she'll be doing in uh, this event. Also, yeah, tremendous. If you want to watch her times as we go through this, you know, obviously she would love to be able to do the qualifying time here in Port Elizabeth. So, you know, if you have a look at what time she did, she sort of had two different races yesterday. So going out on a 33-2, you'll see that it's very close to the time that she did in the heats where she got out around about a 110 so if she goes out at about a 110 just slightly slower than the 109 in her fastest swim in the heats then she may be able to come back fast enough she just must avoid hitting the 39s on the 50 otherwise then they're a little bit off that time okay Jeez, well, uh, Kayleen Corbett uh, going along nicely as uh, she continues with this time trial. Remember, no one else is allowed to be in the pool for this time trial to be ratified. And uh, were she to make a time, it certainly does count. And uh, as you can see, there is an official there watching on. Kayleen Corbett, 1.0.10.02, just outside of the time. 109.66 was that split. And uh, you can hear the crowd cheering her on as she makes her way over to the next. Uh, but uh, this will be the final turn. 
But I do think, um, Derek, that um, she is at a better, she's got a better stroking than, what, than when she did the heats. And obviously she's not going to have to make up the time that she had done when she went out slower in the final. So if her, if her teammates get behind her, yeah, they could get her to come through faster. So let's see what her, what her 150 mark is. And here she comes to the 150 mark, 146.94, just ahead, or just under, uh, just ahead, 146.81 was the time she needed to be under. But uh, here she comes home. I uh, remember 226.57 was uh, the ultimate time uh, that she, she posts. So we will see here, Kayleen Corbett pulling away nicely here in this time trial. Listen to the crowd go crazy for Kayleen Corbett. She's going to be close. She's going to be close again. Very, very close. Let's see if she can do it. Kayleen Corbett. So 225.52 is the target for her. 225.52 is her target. It. And it looks, she has done it. 225.18, 225.52 was the target. Well done. Kayleen Corbett has completed it. Wow, look at her. Look at the emotion on her face. Yeah. That is incredible to see. Kayleen Corbett, congratulations. Wayne, uh, thank you so much for all your Pleasure, help. Man. Really, really great to see you. Jeez, and uh, parting words about her? Well, you know, that's what happens when you do it the right way and you don't get rushed in the main final like she did. And uh, she did two different races yesterday and then she came back and did the time trial and got under the time. So really all credit to her. She's a lovely girl out there and it's nice to see. We could have two girls in the Olympic final, you know. So yeah. that's, how that's how good they are. Oh, man. Well, Wayne, thank you so much. It's been a, a pleasure having you on board. Thank you for your tremendous input and uh, for joining us. And best of luck uh, for the rest of uh, the SA Swimming Champs here in Quebec as we ready ourselves uh, for the tail end of uh, this championship. Tatiana about to take to the water now for her uh, time trial as well, getting used to the fact that uh, she'll be competing over the course of three days as opposed to two. Thank you very much, Wayne. Great, great to have you on board. And uh, yeah, best of luck uh, with you and your team for the next couple of days. And Tatiana Schoenmark and I are out to take to the water. And joining us to talk about this event Dean Price, great to have you back. We chatted to you right at the beginning of the event. Uh, what have you made of it so far? Okay, I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, time trial for Ta Tatiana here. You can see she's really psyched. Obviously, the time that she did last night, 220.1, fastest time in the world. And um, the world record is a 219.1, so I think she would like to get as close as possible to that time. You know, this is most probably one of the last times that she'll get to... Um, sort of prepare by, by racing before going to Tokyo. So I think she wants to take every opportunity. I know speaking to her coach, Rocco Mehring, um, in Tokyo, what they're going to have, they're going to have heats in, the uh, heats in the evening, then semi-finals in the morning, and then finals the next morning. So what she wants to, she's had two swims, but she wants that third swim because that's what she's going to do in Tokyo. And she knows she has to have three great swims to be prepared to actually compete in Tokyo. So she's had two brilliant swims now. Now we just want to see what she can do in our third swim. We just saw Kayleen Corbett have a great swim there, doing her one of the best times that she's done in at least 18 months. So I think that'll be very motivational for Tatiana as she gets ready. And obviously these girls have been through this experience of heat semis and finals. And now obviously Tatiana wants to see... So she's picturing that she's coming out for the finals for Tokyo. And she knows she has to get up and deliver a great swim here. Okay, remember Tatiana Schoenmacher already having booked her place to Tokyo. So this is about just uh, replicating the experience she will uh, get over there at uh, Tokyo 2020. Uh, but remember, she can still break her own record. So that's still very much in the offing. The record stands at 221.79, which uh, she set last night again. Uh, this in the women's 200 breaststroke. Let's see how she does. No other competitors in the water. Purely a time trial, but still ratified nonetheless less as long as there's no one else in the pool and away she goes Tatiana Schoenmacher the first of four laps all eyes on this amazing swimmer from Swane okay we're gonna watch her as she goes down this is the first 50 um, we're gonna look for a time just under 32 most probably the world record split is a 31.7 so that's what we're going to be watching down the first um, 50 meters just to see how 
close she is or just outside of that time it is and she's coming down to the wall now and uh we're going to look at the clock are we not it is i think it's around 31 7 if yeah, i'm not so mistaken she's, she, so she's right on world record pace now she kind of backs down on the second 50 and then really picks up on the third one so this is tatiana's tactics but um if she's going to come through the time that we're going to look through is just under the 108 most probably about a 107 7 106 7, 6 at the uh, 100 meter turn and uh, we're watching her now come into the wall and uh, just watching that time just to see how close she comes into the wall and it looks like it's going to be just outside the pace i think she's a 108 2 so it's still a good swim but i think uh, just off the pace at this point now tatiana likes to pick up on the third 50. This is where she's really strong on the third and fourth 50s. We saw it last night. She was incredibly strong on that last 50 meters. Yeah, man, what an asset to South African swimming. If you just joined us, Tatiana Schoenmaker not competing against others. She's competing against herself and the clock. It is a time trial here as she goes for the final yeah. turn. So we're going to look at about a 143 high, 144 as she comes to the wall. And she's 144.4. So this is going to be a great swim. I think we're going to look most probably around a 220 unless you can really bring back this uh final 50 meters a reminder she's looking of the good obviously it's pretty hard to do it on your own because you don't have that extra adrenaline of someone next to you but i think it's just going to be over the 220 mark yo jeez we wait for confirmation about her time yo i, th I think so She's waiting to see the confirmation. 2.21.30. She's got it. No, she, so that's uh, it's Olympic time. It's 2.21.30. But it's a little bit slower than uh, she went than last, she night. last night. Yeah, of course, yeah. yes. And I think that's that's the hard thing that she wanted to get used to, is that to actually deliver great swims one after the other is a pretty tough call. But she'll be happy with that. That's still, other than her time last night, it's still the fastest time in the world. So she's looking very strong uh, at this point to get ready to go to Tokyo. So just confirmation of that, Tatiana Schoenmaker had the original record of 2.21.79. Last night she went and broke that uh, in a time of 2.20.17. And uh, now swimming at 2.21, uh, what was that, uh, 32 if I'm not mistaken. So uh, just outside uh, beating the original time she said a, a, <laughs> a while back, but uh, unable to replicate the feat or beat the one from yesterday. But that being said, a phenomenal swim nonetheless. It's a great swim. You know, when you're doing the fastest times in the world, no one can dispute that, that you're one of the greatest swimmers. And this is uh, Tatiana Schoenmaker. She's done the first and second fastest times in the world in the last 24 hours in the 200 breaststroke. And that's an incredible performance. And she follows uh, straight up from Kayleen Corbett, to, who looked incredibly impressive and also booked her spot to Tokyo. That was a, a tremendous swim. Um, Wayne, as he left, saying we could possibly to maybe have a medalists, uh, two medalists uh, when it comes to breaststroke over in Tokyo. OK, let's uh, just head downstairs quickly. Henry Lowe is ready to chat to David Glover. And we've got Henry Lowe here with us after a fantastic 400 freestyle going way under the four minutes at 3.57. I watched his pacing. It was great. Had a hectic open water schedule too, so he's definitely on a high. Are you, uh, you looked really excited. I saw you giving a heart symbol after that race. Um, what made you so excited? I mean, uh, it was just so fun coming out here. I wasn't even supposed to be here. Um, I was actually training for open water still a few a few days ago, but I just decided to come out, just race hard and hard training, just try to have fun with it, try to get some PBs, even though I'm not tapered or anything. And yeah, it was just fun. Well, we're super proud of you and well done on all the last month and all your great performances in the open water and in the swimming pool. And good luck for any further events at the gala. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, David Glover. Thank you very much, Henry Lowe. Uh, some tremendous swimming on offer as we head over to the final event of the evening. It's uh, the women's 4x100 meter freestyle relay. And it's uh, going to be a cracker. Uh, Dean, just uh, confirming what I asked earlier about uh, Kayleen and Tatiana over in Tokyo. Yeah, so I think it's, you know, I think the first step is um, I'm going to be a bit overcautious, but our first step is to get them into the finals. Mm. I think once you're in the finals, then anyone swimming in the finals got a chance of the medal. But I think to jump the gun 
and uh, predict medals at this point. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always, so sport is a very big unknown, you know, and I think they're showing great form, especially, you know, Tatiana doing two of the fastest times in the world. It gives you a lot of credibility mm. going into to Tokyo. So let, let's, I mean, without saying medals, let's say that they have the potential to medal. You say that? I but think at this point, Tatiana has the potential to medal. I think Kayleen with a 225, it'll take about a 222 to make the final. Okay. So she still has to jump down two, three seconds, which is quite a big call in two, three months. I think possibly by Commonwealth Games or next Olympics, you know, she's still very young. She'll have the opportunity to jump down that. But I think, you know, sometimes we have to be realistic and expect that uh, the human body can only improve so much, you know, every few months or year. But with Tatiana, is on her game. She, she already proved her, her medal at the last World Champs, getting the silver medal. And I think now doing the, fast, the two fastest times in the world, I think she's, she's ready to, to really stand up and be one of the contenders. And there we have uh, the Nell sisters. Uh, very excited for this event. It's the first time we're going to see relays in the pool. Uh, yet, Absolutely. So the reason we're swimming this relay, the girls um, in your picture right now, okay, we've got... Uh, Four girls who are going to be trying to achieve a Olympic qualifying time. Now, what happens at the last World Championships, the top 12 teams get selected automatically to compete at the Olympics. Then there's four sort of open slots that um, the next four uh, countries who have achieved top times become eligible to take one of the slots. So right now, we're trying to get our team into one of those four slots. Now, the time that they've got to do is between um, the slots vary that there's four slots the slowest time is a 341.3 and the top time is a 340.3 so it's one second margin which is quite a tight mm. call so we're going to try and get these uh, four girls into those uh, that margin of a 340 to a 341 and then they will get the slot to to actually compete at the olympics so these are our best 100 freestyle swimmers if we added up the times that they did in the 100 freestyle last night It'll put them just under the 341, about a 340.7, 340.6, which would be enough to qualify for the Olympics. So you can see them there, they're, they're getting psyched up. Amy Kenny will be the, the girl who's going to lead off the relay. Uh, she was second in the 100 free with a time of 54.9. So we're looking at an average of 55.1 seconds um, for, for this relay team, which is a very, it's a tall order. But um, these girls know what's on the line, and I think they're going to do everything they can to to get their team to Tokyo. Uh, and and, and explain, explain the teams as to how they are made up. Okay, so the main team is um, the four top girls. Now, the, the other teams, we, we actually invited all the, the freestyle swimmers who are down here competing at the Olympic trials to put their names down and to be part of a almost like a lucky drip, mm. lucky dip draw. And a lot of them wanted to have another experience of racing. They didn't get a chance to make the final. It gave them a chance to stand up and race in the final, to race against the top swimmers. So we can see them all very excited to get up and be part of this relay event. And uh, the official titles are by their letters. So it's not as if they're racing uh, according to provinces. You've got teams A through to uh, G, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to be an exciting race. We've got uh, swimmers that have dominated matters in the 100 meter freestyle all teaming up and competing against each other. Very much so. So we've got some really good swimmers in here, but I think the focus is definitely going to be on uh, the main team. Amy Candy with a white cap there in lane four. And away they go. It is Amy Kenny leading out in front over in lane four. Uh, a very good start from her. Uh, others to watch out for that uh, you can uh, reckon that will threaten for the contention. Okay, so we, Amy is going to want to go down and get close to um, a low 26 down at that first 50 meters. So she's looking good at this point. We're just going to watch the clock as she comes down. So Amy Kenny, a very good start from her. She's in, uh, the turn. Yeah, yeah, no, 26.3, so that's, that's pretty good. That's what we want to see now. She's very strong. You can watch her now bring in that tremendously powerful kick and you can just see as she brings in that kick she just powers away from the rest of the field very impressive and performance be watching here. the time now as she comes down so amy kenny continues to power ahead and she'll be handing over to okay this looks like it's erin gallagher coming up next so in the water goes erin gallagher okay 55.2 so 
I think that's Emetelius going into the water now. So we've got a, it's a tight call now. We're looking at tens of seconds. As I said, the time that they got to average is 55.1. Obviously, the first person to start is the most compromised because they start when the gun goes off. Okay. The next three swimmers have the opportunity of watching the swimmer coming in, and we call it a relay takeover, which normally gives them about a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 of a second advantage. So we're going to look at a time now at about a 150, as close to 149 as we can get coming down to the end of this leg. But you can see quite clearly now there's a huge margin opening up. And uh, this is just before Erin Gallagher goes in. She was the winner last night. So we're coming in now. And uh, look at 150.2. So we're good. They, they're on target. Wow. They're averaging a 55.1. That's the time that we wanted them to average. Erin Gallagher, very seasoned campaigner now, the third swimmer going into the pool. And uh, she's got a lot of experience having been to Commonwealth Games World Champs. And uh, she knows how to put a relay together. So she's a crucial leg, and you can see she's going down really well this, this first 50 meters. This Team A certainly dominating matters. Erin Gallagher taking over nicely from Emma Chelius, who's having a very good second leg. And Erin uh, Gallagher coming on the home stretch now, and she'll be handing over to Rebecca Meader, uh, who is anchoring, as you heard her speak about it a little earlier. The time once again that they're so, aiming for. So we're going to look for a 144 plus or 145 low, 145 zero coming in. And she's coming in now to the wall. She's got about eight, nine meters to go. And we're gonna be watching the clock very tightly as she comes in. And this is a great split. Okay, so 144.5, that's a huge margin. That's fantastic. That sets the whole relay team up. That was a 54.3 that she split there. That's what the, the team needed. Okay, now we're looking if, uh, Rebecca Mida, her individual time was a 55.6 in the individual race. If she can go a 55.5, then we're going to move into the, the, the top slots for the Olympics in the open slots. So we're looking good at this point. We've got uh, 40 meters to go. Uh, Rebecca Mida, really tough competitor, tough on all the strokes, a great medley swimmer. And the total time needed? And the time now is a 340. As I said, 340.3 will put us top of the slots. 341, 3 is the time we've got to beat to get into those slots. And here we so go. We're coming, we've got about uh, five seconds to go to get into the wall. We're just watching how close she comes in now. Let's see that 340. time. 340.2, fantastic. There she That's got the it. the fastest time outside of the 12 that qualified. Oh, so well oh, done. Oh. The girls just got their slot to Tokyo. That is amazing. What a performance. Look at the smiles uh, etched across their faces. Congratulations to the team of Amy Kenny, Emma Chelius, Erin Gallagher, and Rebecca Mida. Wow, Dean. That's incredible. You know, a couple of months ago, we looked to see, and we thought the girls, have, we've got incredible young girls in South Africa. We wanted to give them an opportunity to try and make the Olympics. We've had two teams now who've done the qualifying time, the 4x200, now the 4x100 have done it. We've got one more on our wish list, and that's the 4x100 medley on uh, Monday night. So well done to these girls, fantastic efforts, and uh, it's great that we've got so many girls who we hopefully will be sending to Tokyo. Jeez, that is astounding. And, and once again, just to explain for the viewers uh, how those teams were selected and how uh, Kenny, Chelius, Gallagher, and Mida ended up uh, racing together. So last night was the finals of the Women's 100 Freestyle. And we took the fastest four swimmers okay. to compete in the relay tonight. And luckily, these girls are seasoned campaigners. They've, they've been around. They've proved their mettle. They've been great swimmers for the last two years. And uh, it's a great night for, for sport in South Africa, for women's sport in wow. South Africa, and a great night for swimming to get another team uh, qualifying for the Olympics. And, and it must be amazing. I mean, uh, it's, it's not like football, for instance, where you've got to physically be a teammate with someone else but I mean these girls have been competing against each other uh, throughout uh, this this event here in Quebec and suddenly they're thrown into the mix as a team and they go and do something like that absolutely you know I think when when the purpose you, it, when we have a great purpose it unites everyone and that's the beautiful thing we saw tonight it united four different swimmers they got together they swam their hearts out and now they've earned a team for South Africa at the <laughs> Olympics in the 4 100 freestyle and I think uh, as uh, all people in South Africa, we can be very proud of these swimmers. You know, they've achieved a very lofty goal. And it's a great message for all young kids. There's a great opportunity in swimming. And these girls are just showing what can be done. Yeah, 
man, jeez, I can tell you what, there's goosebumps all over the place. People are cheering as they should be. Uh, there's a nice photo opportunity amongst the four of them. <laughs> the smiles across their faces. Um, I mean, the astounding thing is, is that you come to an event like this looking to qualify for Tokyo as, as, as a swimmer at, for yourself. And then we've got four people that have suddenly are going as a team. Absolutely. <laughs> and you can just see the elation from the girls. Uh, getting their photos taken, waving to the crowds. You know, it's this is a culmination of years of work and putting it together, and it's it's incredible to see it. And well done to them. Oh man, jeez, I tell you what, that was astounding to see. Uh, wrapping up the fourth day here in Quebec, uh, the, the event's been magnificent, Dean. I mean, we chatted about it uh, uh, as we kicked things off four days ago. Uh, we've still got two days to go, but uh, how have you enjoyed it so far? I think it's been really good. I think. What's been great is that um, the swimmers have, have, have stood up. It's really hard to qualify for the Olympic Games. Those times are incredibly fast. You know, if you look around the world, most of the European countries are setting maybe eight or nine swimmers. I think we've just stepped up in the last two days. We've got most probably about 12, 13 swimmers. Jeez. We've still got one more relay, hopefully, to make it. And um, that's it's, it's just so great to see this. And uh, hopefully tomorrow we've got some great swims. We've got the 100 Butterfly. We've got our hero Chad Leco uh, swimming the 100 fly tomorrow. We've got Tatiana Squinmarker and the 100 breaststroke. So even though we've had great swims, I think the next two two nights are going to be just as exciting uh, in the pool here in Port Elizabeth. Yeah, they certainly promise to be riveting. It's amazing you say how how they picked up their games over the last couple of days, and it's just that competitive atmosphere that just breeds a competitor, and they thrive in it uh, as we've been able to see. Yeah, no, definitely. It's, you know, what happens is that that ability to, to step up is what makes a champion. And sometimes it's not there in the beginning. It's something that, it's a skill that's acquired. And it's that, you know, there's many sayings, you know, that it's the winner's the guy who gets up after losing. And this is, this is the kind of personalities you see. These swimmers, no matter what they've done, whether they were successful or not successful in the last 48 hours, they stood up and they delivered tonight. And that's what makes sport so exciting when people stand up and do something unexpected. So it was a great performance and we really enjoyed to see them swimming tonight. Four days done, two to go. What's been the highlight for you so far? Okay, I think just there's been some incredible performances. It's hard to say one swim. I think Matthew Sates, 200 free. And uh, then I think tonight's relay, um, great swim. I think Tatiana's 200 best obviously takes the cake fastest time in the world in four years and just those things alone just make uh, the whole sport really exciting and great to be part of it it really really does well uh, graham hill uh, he's downstairs graham hill we chatted to yesterday a south african swimming legend when it comes to coaching having uh, gone over to the olympics numerous times and he is the sa swimming olympic coach and uh, let's head downstairs shortly uh, to find out what he has to say following another great day of swimming That event that we just witnessed there, the 4x1 women's relay, a uh, huge achievement there by those four girls. We were uh, trying to uh, achieve a time to qualify for the Olympic Games. Hard works is uh, the previous world champs, 12 teams have already qualified, so it leaves four spots open and the next four fastest teams make the cut. Uh, we, we were chasing a time, for 16th place, we were chasing a time of 341.3. Uh, but 14th place is 340.3 and we achieved uh, 340.29 so we're sitting in, four, in 14th place at the moment which uh, is really good position to be in so um, hold thumbs and uh, cross fingers and hopefully uh, the girl, the four girls are going to Tokyo with a 4x1 free relay the first time ever that a women's relay 4x1 freestyle relay has qualified for the Olympic Games cool. awesome. Thank you so much, Thank you very much to Graham Hill. You can see the ecstasy on his face. He is absolutely elated with that performance. History being made in Quebec tonight. What a performance from uh, the 4 by 100 meter freestyle relay outfit. Kenny, Chelius, Gallagher and Rebecca Meader. It has been an astounding, astounding uh, way to cap things off here this evening. And uh, speaking of those ladies, we're going to head downstairs once again shortly. Uh, just to catch up with some of them. Uh, they, they are thoroughly, thoroughly um, happy, as they would be, to have uh, just made history once again uh, here in Quebec. The 
wrap of day four of six at the SA Swimming Championships in the heart of the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality. So let's, let's head downstairs. And, and we have our 4x100 girls team with us. What an incredible way to end the night. Uh, just for people at home, how it works is there's 12 qualification spots um, that have already been taken. And there were four spots left. And these girls needed to get a certain time in order to qualify. And their time now places them, uh, we call yeah, 14th, which is in the top 16. So uh, this is absolutely amazing. How do you guys feel after that? I think I feel a little ill, actually. <laughs> I've got such butterflies in my tummy. I'm just so proud of these girls. And yeah, to anchor for this team was just such a blessing. I mean, to be the one to touch the board and see the time and then see your teammates on the side of the pool was just incredible. So well done, guys. <laughs> Oh, Martin. Um, yeah, pretty much what Beck said. I'm just so proud of these girls. I get a little bit emotional. Um, it's just so amazing to see that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's just I'm really so amazing proud. to see that Swimming South Africa, the girls are really showing up and they're doing all of us proud. They're doing this country proud and I'm so proud of them. Um, when speaking to Graham Hill, I heard that it's the first time ever that a 4x100 freestyle relay team has actually qualified. So that is an absolutely amazing achievement. Emma, you took that first 50 out like in, an, in a TV game, like a turbo boost. Yes, you looked like, yeah, you, you girls were all amazing. Emma, how does that, how does that feel for you? I think I was very overexcited. <laughs> Being a sprinter at heart, I just wanted to take it out really hard and knew it was going to be painful, but it's a lot easier to bear the pain when you know you have three amazing girls that you're racing for. So it's awesome to be with this team. I'm so, so proud of all of us, especially in the last year, what we've been through, you know, collectively, that we've all persevered and come out stronger for it. So I think, if anything, we can take huge confidence from this and it's onwards and upwards from here. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that fourth member of the team, Amy Canny, the youngest one, she yeah, started off the race for them and started with a great time. So well done to all four girls and good luck in the build-up. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Well Thanks, guys. Thank you very much to David Glover. A reminder, Amy Canny, Emma Chelius, Erin Gallagher and Rebecca Meader have just made history. A 4x100 metre women's relay team is going to the Olympics from South Africa. What an astounding performance. What a time. And uh, they are headed to the 2020 Olympics taking place in 2021. And uh, yeah, that wraps up another astounding day of swimming action. Day four done and dusted here in Quebec. Thank you for joining us. We've thoroughly enjoyed bringing it to you. And man, oh man, it just gets bigger and better just when you think you've seen it all. Something like that happens. And uh, what a way to finish it off. You can see the emotion in the competitors' faces. You can see the emotion in Grand Hill's faces. Uh, you can't see the emotion here poolside, but I can. And it's been amazing to watch. Congratulations to all concerned. Congratulations to those who've booked their tickets to Tokyo. We'll see you again tomorrow for day five of the SA Swimming Champs taking place in Quebec.